live, Walter. We're live. We've got our interwebs back on. Put yeah. on your big girl panties because we are back. And we I are like big girls. <laughs> from the Big Daddy Gun Studios, there's finally once again the internet has been reinstalled in the well, building. Think for yourself. <laughs> okay. Well, you're well, we've got Walter Keller here from Safety Harbor Firearms. Literally tonight, you are at Safety Harbor Firearms, right? I'm at the shop because the power's on. It's not on at my house yet. Let me turn this off. Yeah. Here. So no power in Safety Harbor. Well, there's lots of power in Safety Harbor. It's just not in my house yet. No, no power in your house. I think somebody's watching you, Walter, very closely. Watching me. I saw that your your mayor in Safety Harbor like mentioned you, but that was probably by accident, right? Oh, we don't know how that happened. Actually, that's kind of funny though, because yeah. I think on Facebook. I think he just tagged everything that said Safety Harbor just over and over and over and over. So yeah, he didn't realize what he was doing. Yeah, yeah, I'm not complaining. I don't know him. I've never, I've never met the current mayor. The other mayor, I've, I've had, uh, I met him a few times, and he stopped by the chat with us when the Boy Scouts were selling stuff down on Third Friday night. But mm -hmm. yeah, no, he's cool. Oh, okay. All right. So here we are. We're live. We're talking. You know, we're back. We just want everyone to know we're back. We're alive. talking about the aftermath of Hurricane Irma, and uh, of course, we want to know what's up with you guys. If you're in Florida or any of the affected areas. Right. All the way up to Georgia. People in Georgia got hit kind of hard because no one expected it in Georgia. I guess it was yeah, like they the first had time. Flooding in South Carolina, I see too. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. I mean, we got we got by. I mean, we were supposed to be in the epicenter of it, and then it shifted to the to the right. Luckily for us, mm -hmm. and, um, we didn't get hit like we could have been hit. But yeah. Um, so. We will talk about that, plus we will show guns, and we'll talk about a whole bunch of other stuff. We'll, we'll shout out everyone that's there. I want to invite everyone that's watching us right now live to click the like button. Of course, click the like button. Make sure you, you've liked us. Make sure you're subscribed. And uh, really, really, we need you to share this with your friends and family and let them know that we are here and we are live and we are talking and uh, let us know what you want to talk about. You know, Let us know where you're at, if you're doing all right, what's yeah. been going on in the gun world since we've been gone. Yeah. I will do some shout And we, we probably have some other folks joining us uh, at some point here. They're going to come on while we're going. Uh, I want to shout out to Vanessa Kitty, first in the chat room with us. Uh, Chris B, Razor JB, uh, The Tyven Show is in there, E Rock. Yeah. What's up, Time and Show? Joe Carpenter is in the building. Oh, I got I got something I got to show you. I'm gonna get up for just a second. Uh, right back. Okay, yeah, go ahead and get it, and we'll we'll still be here. We're not going anywhere. War Dex, M King. Um, let's see who else. Tony London. You know, um, looks like Tony London says he's on I-95. Savannah's not that bad. I-95, DC2 Mega Boost, Lunchbox the Magnificent. <laughs> That's cool. Uh, DC Channel Vlogs, Michael Jenkins, Clay Pigeon, TJ Blaze, a whole bunch of people. If I didn't shout you out, just like do a roll call or something, and I will shout you out here at some point. So we've got to figure out exactly what we missed, Walter. But what are you getting? Here, let me lock this thing on you. Ordinances. Ordinances. Is, is, well, what the, whoa, what the heck is that? A couple of weeks ago, I mentioned that I was interested in 106 millimeter recoilless rifle stuff. Uh huh. And one, <laughs> of our, um, one of our listeners sent me a sent me an email. Said he would I be interested in that projectile I just showed you? Wow. And I said, and I said hell yeah. So um, Hells to the yes. So you don't say no to that kind of stuff. I just happened to have a fired 106 millimeter recoilless shell, and then when I sit that pro Projo on top, it's a complete package. So um, am I allowed to ask you who the hell had that? Because that person is badass. <laughs> what, say that again. I'm sorry. Are we allowed? Are we allowed to talk about who it was that had that? Um, I don't know if they want to talk. I mean, I don't oh, know. If, um, okay. If we're, yeah, they, they, we were watching, we, they were watching the show, and yeah. um, I, I appreciate it greatly. I mean, it's cool, right? Um, yeah, we, I'll definitely, know, uh, I'll definitely, I'll definitely cherish it in my collection. Uh, yeah, uh, 
So Joe Carpenter says, is Walter's desk safe? <laughs> this is inert, 100% inert. inert. Um, <laughs> Show it to us again. Show it to us again. Come on, you guys got to share this. How many this shows is, will you see? This is like a 20 millimeter workout. This is all steel here, while, by the way, if anybody's wondering how heavy this is. Yeah. And then show us what's underneath that. Like, what, what is that? The fins? The fins come out? Correct. So once it would be fired, these fins would deploy to stabilize the thing in flight. Wow. This thing is badass. I mean, can you? And what would they use this? Like, uh, who would they use this against? Uh, tanks and, you know, and structures. And yeah. Because this has a, um, what do you call it? It's a, oh, oh, what is that? Shape charge. It has a shape charge in the nose. So this thing will make quick order of a tank and things like that. It won't, it won't have and have a problem with that. So. Well, they just we just stopped using recordless rifles the americans anyways because we got things like tow missiles and and very and javelins and different stuff like that so um yeah, that's pretty badass man there's still there's there's still our country there still is countries that use recordless rifles and i think the chinese still manufacture them i know for sure um they're still using them over in the middle east when they're killing each other right now so no it's that's great i love it um I didn't know that, that 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 projectile had that fin assembly on it. And that's all machined and really cool looking. And yeah, so that's very yeah, cool. So Thank basically you. Basically, is a recoilless rifle just like a big, massive bazooka? Pretty much, yeah. Like thing? Yeah, oh. yeah, yeah. And they made a 37, a 75, and a 106 millimeter. And this wow. Thing, yeah. 106, yeah. Oh, okay. So do you have, you have, you have the recoilless rifle? I think you... No, I do not. You don't? Oh, okay. So that's but all you need now. I'm, I'm always, you know, if I can find enough parts, I'd like to build a dummy gun anyway. I don't need a real one, but. Yeah, no, that'll be cool just to see it. Uh, I see 904s. 904 says, hey, guys, we're still alive. 904, I am that's still without know. power at my house. So. Yeah. Um, tell us how you're doing, 904. I'm sure that, you know, he, he's in uh, Jacksonville, obviously. Right. Well, the areas surrounding right. Jacksonville. Right. And, and like are you swimming 904? Is that a lot of places in Jacksonville look like they're wet? So, yeah, he's uh, so he says. Steve says there's no power yet. Sucks. So yeah. that's the situation that's going on in Florida. I don't know how many people have gotten back power, but I think there's still a lot of people in Florida without power, and that's yeah. going to continue for some time. Even in the Gainesville area, about half of Gainesville got power back, the other half no power. Yeah, we 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 got off really easy, like I said before. I mean, some people just got freaking destroyed so um we didn't have that problem um just yeah. some small limbs and branches and then the power being out which i expected that to happen i am not not at all surprised about the power so we got we were we had power to about 10 45 i was getting ready to do a blog with tyvin and um getting everything ready right to go ready to go one two three boom the power went out <laughs> so yeah I think I lost power before you because uh, I remember my power went out around seven, and then um, I remember Tyvin calling me and I was sleeping because power yeah. goes out, my brain shuts down. <laughs> my brain was like, "Go to sleep," Boom. <laughs> and then Tyvin called me and I was like, "Who the hell is this calling me at five fifty-six in the morning? You call me? <laughs> Crack it on and only hip hop people are gonna know what that means." So anyway, uh, you have—I know you have no clue, Walter. What, what was that? What did you say again? What'd you no, cry? I was just reciting a rap song. Oh, oh yeah, I wouldn't know. Don't even, don't, yeah. even, don't even try me. <laughs> so yeah, I, I know Tyvin called me, and I was, I don't know, I was half awake, half sleeping. <laughs> oh, I hate. I, I when, people, so. when people somebody calls me and I'm like that, I'm like a babbling idiot. I can't. Uh, 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 what? What'd you say? Yeah. <laughs> but we did, as you said, we relatively got off pretty easy. I think I just had electricity out for about like a day and a half or something like that. It came back on. I'm on the outskirts of my town. Inside the town, it's the same kind of thing. Some people got their electricity back. Some people didn't. Literally, some people across the street, like one neighbor across the street has it. One neighbor on the other side of the street does not have electricity. That's, That's just the whole weird way that it goes. That's how it is right now in my house, all around my house and the different blocks around my house. You can see there's lights and people have, you can tell when they close the windows of the house, they got power. And um, and uh, we're sitting without it still. So hopefully maybe tonight, I don't know. So. 
Yeah, you know, it's a rough thing. It's it's rough. But there are people, I think, uh, who got hit the worst in Florida from this oh, thing. Oh, uh, Marco Island, the Keys. The Keys, yeah. The Keys are like a quarter of the Keys, man. Yeah, Nap quarter of the Keys. Naples got it bad. Yeah, Naples, Naples. Surprisingly, Jacksonville got really flooded. So even though they really weren't – because I think they escaped the cone, but somehow they got a bunch of the rain. Well, it was the easterly flow off the Atlantic, the way the thing was spinning, that was drawing all the water in along the East Coast. So Miami yeah. got, you know, lots of places in Miami got real wet too. So, yeah, um, it all depends. Do you know? Do you know what your um, where you are compared to sea level? What's uh, your? We're we, we're twenty, probably twenty two feet above sea level. So we were in we're in a non evacuation zone. Oh, so, twenty two. Okay, that's um, not. That, the only the only way you would get flooding at my house if there was a direct hit, say like with a, um, well during Katrina, some places in Mississippi had thirty feet of water. Yeah, but 20, 20 feet above sea level, you're still close, man. That's not <laughs> not for the normal okay. storm, no. Uh, yeah, but it could you still have, happen. You gotta, have it, you gotta have a storm that comes right up into the bay or just north of of Tampa and swings all the water up into the bay. That's what happened in nineteen twenty one. In, that was the last time there's been a major hurricane in Tampa Bay in 1921. Mm -hmm. and, and in Oldsmar, which is the next city over from Safety Harbor, the reason it's called Oldsmar is because the guy that started Oldsmobile set up a factory in Oldsmar, mm -hmm. and it blew all his machinery out of the factory, so he left. <laughs> he had his fill of Safety Harbor in Florida, so he went back, oh, to, he went back to Detroit, I think. That's so. how you guys lost the Oldsmobile. Yeah. Good old and I think um, I think Florida, there were at least like five deaths initially. I, ju I see here in the news, there were about eight eight people died in a nursing home in Florida. I heard something because about of lack of air conditioning. Oh, well, I can imagine uh, that. That's, that's very believable. Uh, yeah. And, you know, um, of course, we all like in Florida got off a lot better than the people did in, uh, you know, in the islands. There's, there's oh, yeah, that's, yeah. That was just... The, <laughs> there were some islands that were pretty like devastated, um, destroyed. But there's also some, um, you know, some of these islands. I forget which one is the word, but you know, the ones that have pretty s solid gun control. I guess uh, the the bad guys are taking advantage of the of the of the unarmed people too. So I'd let that be a yeah. little for you guys. Well, isn't that the thing in the U.S. Virgin Islands that they try to disarm people? I don't know how that went down. We've got to check that it. actually. That story kind of faded away. I don't know what actually happened with that. Yeah, we got to check into the U.S. Virgin Islands with the gun. But I'm talking about the ones that are run by the Dutch and the ones that are run by some of the other ones. Yeah. Um, the smaller places, I guess uh, there was quite a bit of civil unrest. <laughs> yeah, I would just say in an emergency, do not give up your guns. That's what the hell your guns are for. Sharpen your butter. Yeah. You know, um, what you think all the guns are for. <laughs> You know, no purpose war, no beef, no more. <laughs> you know, nothing you still, else. You still don't know what I'm talking about, do you? No, I ain't, got, I ain't got a clue, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Biggie, Walter, Biggie Smalls. Biggie Smalls, he's dead. Biggie Smalls, yes. He died on my birthday when I turned 25 years old. It, like 20 years ago. Damn him. No, no. Uh, <laughs> Biggie was, the, Biggie was a, a legend. That's an unsolved murder. Um, yeah, it's up there with Tupac. Yeah, those probably two, all you know, related. They weren't like arch enemies or anything, weren't they? You know, it's like uh, they, well, I guess on paper west, or it was an east and west thing, right? There was, there was something like yeah, that know, going on. A little bit about really it. from the east coast, so I know, I know a little bit about it. Yeah, look at you, knowing about the east and the west. East and the west, baby. You know what I'm saying? So we've got Kevin. Kevin's probably getting set up. So um, I know there was like a question or something um about the looting. Um, there was some looting in Florida, right? Yeah, yeah, there's the infamous tennis shoe looters, the ones that yeah, they, those guys. They had to, Didn't they arrest those guys? Yeah, they caught them all. Yeah, yeah, they not too intelligent fellas or and, and females too, there too, also. You know. Yeah, what the hell are you gonna do with some sneakers? I mean, I guess afterwards you can maybe sell those. What, what I think they were stealing Jordans or something like that. I, don't I mean, care if they were stealing them, um, I guess those are expensive. I, I, I don't know. I, you know, is that is that shoe worth? going to jail for no there's very there are very little things to me that are worth going to jail for i don't care so if it was was the slippers i ain't stealing it you know yeah there are some things i would go to jail for but the, but it's a very short list <laughs> you know what i mean um so i definitely wouldn't want to go to jail over that and then looting mm -mm. stupid idea 
But, you know, somebody always is going to, you know, make you that know, in, our, in our world right now, everybody's got a camera on their body. So as soon as that stuff starts, everybody starts taking pictures. It's kind of hard to hide. You know, I mean, yeah, it's not a good idea. So. Yeah. Um, shout out to Lawrence Lerwick. He, he, he's glad that we're OK. Um, glad you're all OK. Yeah, we're all right. No worries there. We like I said, we uh, we got by pretty easy. And, and it was surprisingly enough at my house. A lot of places got a lot of rain. We didn't. We got rain, but it didn't like, like flood rain. It just. Yeah. I think. Did it you was, lose? Did any trees fall down? Not in my house. No. Not not in, not on my street. And we got some huge oak trees in the neighborhood, but, um, but not really. I was really surprised. I thought we we're gonna have to. I thought I was gonna have to use a chainsaw to get down the street, but it didn't happen. Yeah. Hey, Kevin. Hey, man. What's going on, guys? What's up? What's up? We're just talking. We're just sharing uh, hurricane stories. stories. Yeah, hurricane stuff. You know, I was, I, was, I was concerned about my shop a little bit, but um, nothing happened over here. So I'm yeah, glad, I'm glad that was like. That. I noticed you were live casting there for a little bit, and uh, you were throwing up live videos on Facebook. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was yeah. Yeah, yeah you were showing your palm trees. I guess you want people. You want you wanted to show off your palm trees and let everyone know in the world that you have palm trees. Yes. Yes. Congratulations yes. to you. <laughs> and I have a Humvee and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah that's the other thing. The, <laughs> I was thinking, like, man, all the people on your block must be like, why does this guy have all these? <laughs> I brought Humvees my, and I had I had the 1078, which is par parked out front, and it was like, yeah. and people slowing down, looking at that, and the ferret and everything else driving down the street. So, you yeah, know, you yeah. do you keep you all those vehicles usually over there at your house, no. or you just brought them over here? I just brought them over because I didn't want them at at the shop kind of by themselves um, I, and if I needed to use them if it really got bad and I needed to to move things or you know do stuff I'd have those trucks there so yeah uh, yeah I fueled them all up but they were all ready to go but they didn't need to be used so okay it's good you know it's a good thing I'm sure there were some people over there scheming on you like yeah well yeah that guy's got the amphibious vehicles they can scheme on this um, yeah. So how was the storm in your neighborhood? How was the storm in your neighborhood, Kevin? Um, <laughs> no, I tell you what, man, it's it's hard to deal with, even though you guys are going through your, your grief, it's really hard to deal with 82 degree weather with no humidity. I mean, it's... Oh, you oh, poor baby. Hey, I'm, just, I'm shedding a tear. It is I know, it was, it was difficult. Today it got up to 87 and I'm like, oh my God, I don't want to do this. Yeah. But what, so at night it's probably like 65 and you can sleep with the windows open and stuff like that. Uh, this time of year, yeah, you can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So but, thanks to Irma getting mad at you and then calming down as she moved her way through the country, we got the nice cool weather, dropped down to like uh -huh. 75 and a little bit of drizzle, but nothing bad. It's nice. I tell thanks you what. Monday, Monday, the day after the storm, it was really nice outside. It was it felt like a fall day here in Florida. Uh, the humidity was low and there was a breeze all day and then you know it steadily got crappier every day <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah it's pretty hot out there i mean i know right now the folks that don't have electricity that's the tough thing you know yeah um, no electricity no fans going so um someone here wanted to know what we have we learned anything has the storm learned us anything yeah. you know what i learned i need to buy that 20 kw natural gas powered permanently fixed gen set in my house oh, oh now you're so ready for soon that as the power goes off i don't even know it it's, it's, the ac keeps running and the lights are all on and i'm the guy in the neighborhood that's balling yeah. you know what i'm saying yeah exactly so now you're ready for that home house generator huh well i said that after the last time in 2004 and i didn't act on it yeah, I'm I'm ready for that generator too, man. I'm gonna. Yeah, I bought. I mean, I bought military trucks and things like that. So, um, yeah, that's. I'm pretty sure that's gonna happen this time. Yeah, some no, kind of no. tank is some kind of tank opportunity is gonna come along. Actually, there is there is something that's scheming right now, but I can't say anything right now. So, um, yeah, Lawrence Lerwick is in the. So Lawrence, I wonder what part of Florida Lawrence is in. He says I was prepared except for the power. Um, yeah, I didn't have it. I didn't have a generator. So that's, you know, let me, let me, let me touch on that a little bit. Um, the generator thing, you don't have to have a 20 KW gen set to get through the storm. You can, I, I have, um, the one that's running at my house right now is, uh, like 11 horsepower one. It's loud and noisy and all that stuff. 
the neighbor next door has got one of those little those little Honda, like 2000 watt Honda ones that are super quiet. That's perfect, man. You can keep your fridge cold. You can have a couple of light bulbs on, a fan running. And it don't cost that much, really. I mean, um, compared to what people spend on, you know, things, um, they can't keep the fridge cold when the lights go out. Um, or lottery tickets or smokes or that newest cell phone. You can have a little decent little generator. Yeah, or hookers or whatever people spend you, their money on. Hookers, Cocaine, hookers crack. Oh, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Crack. All those things. I think if you're cracked, <laughs> I don't care if the lights are on or not. So, um, but, um, you know, spend a little money. The generator that's running at home we bought in 2005 after the, the 2004 where we had four hurricanes that year. I said, I'm not going to go without again. So I bought this generator, and it's been sitting ever since then. And um, since we haven't had any bad hurricanes, but you know what, it's, it's coming, it's paying off now. So Yeah, absolutely. Rod, to, um, Rod M2C says, his power never went off. Okay. Well, I don't know there's, some people, there's some people that happens. around here, the power went off. Uh, but a lot of those people live in subdivisions where the power's in the ground, the cables are in the ground, not up in the air, like in the older neighborhoods. And um, they're less susceptible to that stuff. So, yeah. Um, Kevin, did you get affected by anything? Did gas prices go up for you? Come on. Uh, I think they went up. I think they went up a few cent. Nothing. Um, nothing huge. Uh, I know we're expected to get a little increase just because of um, you know the the shortage, the temporary shortage or whatever. But no, man, we were we were we didn't we didn't feel it at all. Yeah, gas. I mean, you got to Irma. You had the hurricane in Texas yeah. first, which I guess messed up a refinery, and then you had um, the stuff here. Um, and people started buying gas last Tuesday down here. There was gas stations were running out. Oh, yeah. yeah, gas stations are still low here. I think, um, yes, obviously you had everyone evacuating. Right. And because of the refineries, which I think most of those refineries are back up. Yeah. There, there they, might be one or two that are not up and running, but it's still going to take time. And so now everyone's trying to get back to their homes. Right. Yeah, it was my dad. My dad lives out in the woods and, um, he went, um, a, a friend of his, a female friend of his got a roof leak or something, and he was going to go help her. So he decides he's going to take off and head to Bartow, which is, was, that was right in the middle of the eye when it went through. Yeah. And he starts driving, think he's going to find gasoline. Everybody and their brother's heading south on 19, coming back home. There's cars on the side of the road where people ran out of gas, and he couldn't find any gas. He had to turn around and go back to his house. So, yeah, um, your dad? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I, th I told him, you know, just sit still. Don't you don't need to be out running around right now, you know. Yeah, um, if you didn't need the gas, um, but also the thing that a lot of people were doing, um, there's apps. Called, I know, I know your dad has no idea about what a, even an app is. No, pff, yeah. but um, <laughs> he could have called someone, and someone could have yes. looked it up. Yeah. Told him where to go. When my after my mom after my mom passed away, I got my dad a computer because I thought it'd be something good for him to learn how to do the computer. And very shortly after that, the thing didn't work anymore. And the reason it didn't work anymore because there's a thing called P O R N. Yeah. Um, so Mark Wagner says, after our Kentucky ice storm, I installed a whole house generator. Yeah. And have four more portable generators. <laughs> I had, hey Mark, I had at my house before the storm. I had. How much did that cost, Mark Wagner? Yeah. At my Mark, house, I had four Mark generators. Also, I had the one I'm using, the one I let my dad use, the one my son Will has at his house, and I bought a little cheap Harbor Freight one and a little two-stroke one, which, you know, $90. And yeah. that would have worked to keep my refrigerator cold and the light bulb on. So, you know, when people say they don't have enough money for a generator, I say, well, how, how expensive is your cell phone? And then that'll answer your question right there. So. Yeah. Um, you know, you have to have the generator and you also have to have the electricity and all that kind of stuff. Uh, I mean, you, you can get a small generator and leave it in the box and put it in the closet and, and pull it out when you need it. And you'll never have to you don't have to store it in the in the garage or you don't have to store it with fuel in it. And it'll it'll be there when you need it. You know? Yeah. Just make sure you actually have fuel for that thing when the time comes. And you, you might want to know how to work it, too. But yeah. It's pretty straightforward as far as those little Honda generators and stuff like that. It's pretty hard yeah. not to. So Dan Davis wants to know if we had enough alcohol. I I had enough. I mean, I wasn't. Yeah, a whole family died, by the way, in Orlando. From what? From the generator. Yeah, a whole. Uh, Lola says that there was a family that died because of their generator. Being it happens every time. Somebody. It's 
all, plastered all over the generator. The Harbor Freight one says, do not put it in your house. Do not do this. Do not that. And every time somebody does it, you know, I mean, yeah. The same thing happens down here when it gets cold. You know, somebody will have a, a, a kerosene heater in their house running. It, yeah. Um, it kills them. Yeah. yeah, you have to be careful. And nowadays, the house, if you've got a newer house, they're more um, sealed they're up, more closed up, yeah, and everything. So you really, really need to be careful. But don't run that thing. I think people run it in the house because they're afraid of it getting stolen and all that. No, no, well, you know, yeah, or maybe that, maybe they think it's the rain's going to hurt it. It yeah. ain't. Hurt it. You set, I yeah. think, running, you set it outside, it'll run. Yeah. You, if you, um, if, it, if it's bad enough, you think it's going to get stolen. You know, I, you need to get a gun. <laughs> <laughs> you need to have a pistol or something. You yeah. could chain it down. You could do things, but yeah. you know. Um, Type. No, go ahead. Yeah, I I didn't. Uh, did I drink anything? Nope. No, I think I had one. I had a few beers. You know, I didn't go like crazy. You know. Yeah, I think I had one kind of like almost a beer kind of thing that Lola has around. But you know. No, I didn't. I don't. I, I don't really need those things. So you know. I had a little. I had a little. Uh, I had a little Jack and Coke last night where we were playing uh, Trivial Pursuit. So. Oh, I'm pretty sure you're drinking something now. What's that? I, I said I'm pretty sure you're drinking something now. <laughs> no, this, is just, this is just Diet Coke. That's all. Oh. Of it. Yeah. Well, we're glad you're hanging out with us because I know you could be in a Hooters right now. Yeah, yeah. My wife's at Hooters eating dinner because they opened the Hooters in Clearwater up again. And yeah. I'm, oh man. We're gonna we're gonna come back and talk to the guns, Kevin. You must have like in your. In your neck of the woods, there has to be some kind of emergencies that happen, man. We're not letting you get away with this nonsense. No, no dude. I, I definitely got something. I wanted to definitely make sure that we were all um, stored, stowed away with you guys, making sure you were okay and talking about the hurricane because that was big. But uh, we got a different type of uh, pending emergency going on. I'm, I'm right now Googling natural disasters. I'm sending, you, I'm sending it to you right now. <laughs> You guys can see it, and then you can. Um, St. Louis. <laughs> yeah. So it's uh no, you got the link. I sent check your chat. Check the box. Oh, oh, oh okay. <laughs> um. So yeah, I mean, so whenever you you think we're ready for that, it's kind of a, a heavy hitter. I got a. Uh, I know people are saying I've been kind of quiet, but tonight, but yeah, I definitely um, I brought some things to show based off the article I sent you. Okay, hold on. Let me pull this up. Walter, did you see that article? Yeah, Walter, you get it. I need to uh, I need to open that window up there. Yeah, let's see what. Um, there we go. Let me Dixie. Oh, what's that? Read so, um, but I am glad to know that you guys are okay. But while you guys are looking at that, I will. Yeah, so tell go you ahead and fill us in on this. Oh, you want to know now? Okay. Uh, yeah, we can talk about it. We can talk about it. Yeah. All right. So. Um, St. Louis uh, definitely had the infamous uh, riots, if you will, uh, a few years ago because of the Mike Brown situation. Um, and that wreaked enough havoc on the area. Now we are going through potentially another situation that um, people have promised will be worse. Uh, the uh, information I sent you is on um, a, a St. Louis city cop back in 2011, this guy named uh, Jason Stokely. Well, he's a former St. Louis city cop. Um, committed what I will I will definitely I will in my opinion say murder um, he is definitely one of the bad apples out of a out of a beautiful orchard he was just one of the bad apples and long story short to just kind of sum it up right. he was on duty uh, they got into a they they had a stop going on at a loaches a local church's chicken and it was right in the neighborhood where I grew up too um, and he had to stop there things did go bad the, the gentleman that he shot and killed um, did indeed bump the police cruiser and back the car up toward the police officers. Uh, so he was definitely in the wrong for that. Uh, he then took off from the parking lot. The police cruiser was still in condition to chase him. They did just that after Stokely uh, did fire several shots at his vehicle. Uh, that did not kill him. Uh, they chased him in the police vehicle, in the cruiser. Uh, you can hear him saying, which is probably out of frustration, but you definitely hear him saying, I'm going to kill that mother when we catch up with him, right? Now there I can kind of understand it. Guy just tried to hit you with a car, you're pissed. I get it, right? Um, he catches up with him, but this is where the story gets interesting. They catch up with him, get him surrounded, and this gentleman gets a AK pistol, which I'm sure is not police issued, out of the back of the police cruiser. Oh, the cop did. Oh wow. Yeah, the cop did. Grabs the AK okay. pistol. Um, so wait, he had an AK in the police cruiser? 
In the police cruiser, yes. The police okay. officer had an AK uh, pistol in the police cruiser. Okay. Uh, and this, and just to make sure it's clear, that AK pistol was not taken off the gentleman they were stopping and stored in the vehicle. No, he brought that to work. Mm -hmm. um, he brought the AK pistol to work. Um, he went up to the car after they got the car stopped. It ended with him firing that AK pistol into the car, um, subsequently killing the young man. And then what looks to what looks to be, he goes back to the police cruiser, secures a handgun, a revolver, um, from the police cruiser, and then plants it inside of the vehicle uh, that he just got through shooting into. Um, the DNA retrieved off the gun had none of the drivers and only uh, Stokely's himself. Um, so it it does seem to be a murder case. Um, okay. So the where it gets interesting is now this happened back in 2011, right? So it's just now being ruled on. The judge that is going to um, give the verdict, the case is over. It just ended about three weeks ago. Well, just ended. No, it ended about three weeks ago. And they haven't told the public what the verdict is yet. So, oh, so they know the verdict. They just haven't told people. Yeah, the judge knows anyway. But yeah, he so, hasn't released so I'm pretty sure that we know what that verdict is. Wow. Now. And here's where it gets interesting. This particular judge, this is his last case, and he's retiring. One. All right, he's done. This is his last case he's ruling on. He's retiring. Um, the law enforcement downtown has downtown St. Louis has already started setting up barricades uh, and things like that for preventative measures. I'm not accusing them of knowing one thing or another. They're just preventative measures. Um, the mayor um, and uh, some other uh, local local politicians and uh, clergymen have all come out and put out advertisement about remaining calm and staying calm. My baby. And about staying calm and things like that. He mm -hmm. doesn't care anything about the camera. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's um, fine. That's fine. It, it, they've already put out things asking, urging people to stay calm. And every day it's a new rumor. Oh, they're going to release it today or tomorrow. Now, where, while that's important is I don't have anything against protests. I think protest is, uh, is great. And it's part of what uh, made this country great. What I have a problem with is all the stuff that comes with it under the cloak of protests. Right. Um, and the there are people that are promising on the news that are promising that if the verdict goes the, the way that we don't want it to go, um, that they are going to make it worse than what Ferguson was. Um, and that's where it gets a little, it gets a little iffy for me. So that's not, that's not protest at that point. Yeah, it's not right. It's not protest. We go beyond protest and we get into a whole nother, we get into riots at that point, right? Yeah, when you start destroying people's property, that's not protest. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, and th that's where it gets uh, interesting. So yeah. it's, it's one of those things that, I, you know, anybody that looks at this thing, you know, law enforcement or not, everybody's looking at it like, OK, this should be open shit. Right. That's that's the way people are viewing it. Um, the local police department is not coming out in support of them. Like this guy's out on a limb and now it looks that it could go. You know, it shouldn't even be a 50 50. It, it, it really should be more like a 99 to one um, and, you know, kind of cowboying it from the couch. However, um, and I'll tell you a personal story. Back when, when they're promising it gets worse than Ferguson, back when Ferguson happened, I stayed 15 minutes or so, give or take, away from um, where uh, Mike Brown was shot and killed at. You would think that that stayed isolated. And what what I want people to know is when, when that happened, um, there were news newscasters that were doing their own thing. And one thing that went out over local news uh, was areas that lost police services. I was one of them. My zip code lost police services because my police department is St. Louis County. St. Louis County is ultimately responsible for anything that blows up in our small municipalities. They are the big reinforcement force. Uh, so nobody was ready for that. Right. So nobody prepared for it. And so they were there. We had no police services so much. So the crime started leaving the immediate area and started venturing off because they knew there were no cops. Yeah, man. That's um, like, uh, you know, Gotham City when uh, Arkham gets He's open expected. wide, yeah, and Batman so I, I know, is out of commission. And I know what we normally bring things on here to show, and I'm normally a guy that stays away <laughs> from this stuff, but I'm still prepared. In that incident, I actually had to go rescue a police friend of mine. No, no BS. He lived, happened to live a couple of blocks from where Mike Brown was killed. Um, oh, hold on, my phone is my computer is threatening things to shut off. <laughs> Ah, there we go. Wanted to make sure the computer didn't shut off. Um, he stayed a couple of blocks from where it happened. I get this phone call from him right when the riots first started. Like, hey, my neighbors know I'm a cop. He didn't work in that area. 
Uh, but hey, my neighbors know I'm a cop. All I got is my service pistol in the house, man. I got four dudes with AK-47s outside of my house threatening to shoot my house up. Wow. You know, can you help me? So, you know, I, I secure my house, run over there. I get out with um with my AR. I get out with um, a buddy of mine, um, shotgun. Didn't like point him at the guys. The guys were kind of like still pacing this area. And they saw us get out. They kind of, kind of, you know, walked away a little bit. I armed him with the 12 gauge, stayed about an hour and a half with his family, let him know what to do, how to work the 12 gauge, um, left him with 200 rounds of ammo, uh, more ammo for his uh, his service pistol. I got back home to my family because I figured I had the luxury of time. He stayed in the immediate area. I had the luxury of time. Um, however, I get back and then, you know, I get my family all situated and one, two o'clock in the morning, you know, I'm still up. I'm still very alert. And now all of a sudden I got cars pulling in my neighborhood and I stay in a pretty nice neighborhood. I got cars pulling in my neighborhood you know, lights off, you hear chain link fence rattling, you know, so I had to go outside and which I was already prepared for. And one of these, when we're talking about showing gear, and making sure you're always ready. One of these guys with my AR and a side arm, of course, huh. and had to run these guys out of my neighborhood. Okay. So uh, why did they come? Why did they, did they come specifically there for you? No, they weren't here for me. They were here for soft targets. Period. Oh, okay. Um, you know, a nice, you know, I don't live in a ritzy neighborhood, but a nice middle class neighborhood, you know, uh, where people just get up and go to work, cut the grass. The biggest story is, you know, who didn't trim their their front yard of the week. You know, like, nothing really happens. Um, car break in here or there, but nothing. So yeah. soft targets. And when the local news is kind of releasing what areas don't have police services. Well, that's where I'm going. Right. If I'm crime, that's where I'm going. And so I had to go outside. I didn't have to fire around at anybody or anything like that. But, you know, you see a guy coming outside full kit. With well, an AR is not let you, afraid to let you see them. Guys tend to run back into the cars and scatter off. That's another point about when they say that these things are the devil. They are truly not the devil. I saved an entire neighborhood with one of these without ever firing a shot. Um, but it is it is definitely um, got me on alert. So as we sit here and do this podcast tonight, I have loaded mags, but I will be sitting here loading more mags. Um, my gear is all ready. Um, and, yeah, we'll be ready for it to happen. You know, yeah, last man, time that's, I think, that, Go ahead. No, I'm listening. You know, last time I was 20 minutes from it. This time I'm 30 minutes from it. Um, so it's it's all about you know being prepared and being ready, and that's my slogan: be prepared for when there is no other choice. And I'm hoping that a I hope that the justice is 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 given. I really do. First of all, second of all, if we do have to protest and then people take advantage of the protest and they turn that into criminal activities, um, you know we got to be ready. So that is the storm that is pending coming to st louis go the verdict can come down any day now and we got to be ready to deal with it yeah um i would much rather that you have some kind of hurricane coming your way man yeah because that kind of stuff is not cool you know that's uh man-made disasters you know yeah. and i've never you know i never what this got hooting after walter just got a delivery of hooters apparently ah. congratulations to you i hope you got enough food for the rest of us oh yeah, oh. yeah. Um, let me give a shout out to my friend uh, Real Cujo, who is in the chat. He just donated fifty bucks to us. Thank you, Real Cujo. That's awesome. awesome. That's so oh, beautiful. Thank yeah, you. We really, yeah, we really appreciate it. He says for the goats. <laughs> so thank you very much. The goats will appreciate it. Uh, you know, uh, not really, <laughs> but we will. We will. We will get them some goat food. <laughs> out of that so thank you real cool joe appreciate it no that's you know that's uh much much appreciated from from everyone here yeah so to, to get back to what you're saying man you know i you know obviously we we all hope that um that justice is carried out there unfortunately you know these situations get more complicated than that and and if they're holding off everything and preparing then right now they probably because you said they know what that verdict is, right? They've known about that verdict for a while. Yeah, the I mean, the judge clearly, I'm sure, has already come to his decision, and leaks happen. And I'm not saying that, that uh, uh, any law enforcement agency shouldn't prepare, you know, and then, great, if you don't need the, 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 the situation, if you don't need everything you set up, great. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm not trying to be a conspiracy theorist, but at the same time, why are you, why did you know three weeks ago and you haven't told us? Mm -hmm. You know, Was so... Was this a jury trial or was this a judge decided? Uh, this was a judge's decision. And, you know, it's um, it's unfortunate 
uh, that it had to, it had to come down to this. And maybe he'll do the right thing. And maybe it's just you know he's he's got to hold it into his pension. It's this particular date, then he'll release it. And it's it's something that you know we all think is deserved to be said. That'd be great. Uh, but what I want to urge people, um, and I'll even put out a couple of uh, independent videos. But I really want to urge people, man, protest if it doesn't go the way you think it ought to go, left or right, whichever way you feel it should go. If it goes opposite. Um, protest, you know, let your voice be heard. Uh, but for the guys or, or girls, for that matter, that are going to take advantage of that and start wreaking havoc on innocent people um, and are going to start wreaking havoc on neighborhoods and, you know, terrorizing people, I am here to tell you, I for one, and I know I don't stand alone, I will not tolerate that. If you want to ever see me get upset, you start affecting my family and you will see a raft of violence that you are not prepared to deal with. I promise that. You have to make sure that you are remaining. Be pissed. I'll be pissed. You know, I mean, it, 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 if it does not go with a guilty verdict, I will be upset about it and will mind not will not mind talking about it because it's a conversation that will need to be had. At the same time, talking yet going over and yanking somebody out of their car and beating them over the head because of something that they have nothing to do with. Not going to tolerate that. I will not tolerate my neighborhood being terrorized. I will not tolerate uh, people choosing soft targets and taking advantage of them and and, and wreaking havoc. I, I will not. I will not go for it. I Absolutely. Will not. Yeah, that's not that's not protesting, and that's not how you um, get things done and you change things. You know, obviously, there's lots of things that we could do. We can protest. Um, also, we control these neighborhoods. We control these towns and cities and stuff like that very easily. Just vote. Go. Who's the mayor of, of that? You know. Uh, of the uh, police department where that guy worked. Yeah, there's a whole bunch of things that you can do. And if the people in those places aren't doing what they're supposed to do, vote them out. Same thing with judges and all that kind of stuff. You know, there's lots of things that you can do about this, but ultimately when you start, uh, you, when you use that as an excuse to take advantage of other people, then, you know, that's a terrible thing. And uh, America, to some extent, is still free. And you really, you know, this is not like a free for all or what is it they talk about in the movie? There's like these movies where they, you know, where there's like a day where people could just do whatever they want. Oh, you mean, like, uh, what is that? Um, what's that movie? Um, purge. The Purge. Yeah. Yeah. This is not a purge type situation. You know, that's in the movies. That's picture like a picture in the real world. You go out there and start doing all that crap. And then don't be surprised that, uh, you know, people are able to defend themselves. Yeah. And, and, you know, yeah. it, it, it bothers me because you I, I come from my town is, is a great town and all the, the, the areas around it. Now, we're in America, so we got issues just like everybody else. But it actually is a it's a it's a great town. It's a great city. It's full of great people. And when the Ferguson issue thing happened, when I had to go over there and rescue that cop buddy of mine and get him some some arms. When I got over there, one thing that, that I saw that let me know that there is true chaos in the wound of the world that is waiting to explode is there were uh, two cars there was a nissan maxima and a ford explorer that pulled into the turning lane of a four lane road pulled into the turning lane now this happens to be at the end i'm only two or three houses from that street uh the intersection where my buddy's house was so as we're standing in the yard kind of making sure it's okay to you know evac to the car get out of the neighborhood picking a safe route uh while he stood fast and we got out of there um these cars pull over in the turning lane. They get out, and you can see the silhouettes of the bodies. They're getting out, and they're covering their faces. You see them covering, uh, pull, picking up different garments, covering their faces. And then they start passing handguns and shotguns and all kind of stuff out to each other out of okay. the back of these vehicles. Um, and so at this point, my safety's dropped, and I'm, you know, I don't, I don't know what they're doing, but they're too close to me. You see three or four police cruisers go by. Now my buddy has his police radio on, and so you hear the cop radio like, "Hey, we got nine or ten armed individuals." in the middle of Chambers Road, and you know, what are we to do? Now, they didn't stop, smart of them, they kept going, and immediately you heard nothing, came right back over the radio, nothing. Then these guys take off, five minutes later, you hear about um, uh, the police getting shot at, you know what I mean? And what I try to tell people is, hate and evil cannibalizes on itself. So you best believe if you're okay with people that react that way to, to their feelings being hurt, which they're really not. They're just looking for a reason to be crazy. Um, but if you're okay with that kind of level of violence, please understand, once it eats up what's in front of it, once it gets rid of the police, you are next, period. You are next. And that's why I get frustrated and people are like, oh, well, 
uh, people are mad and and blase blase and they, they they have a right to go out and speak and protest they do you just don't have a right to bring chaos with it and so yeah. once you start shooting up dominoes i mean these people for christ's sakes were shooting at the fire engines what the hell did the fireman do to you uh and why would you shoot the why would you shoot at the fire department the who if the if the city starts to burn down it, has to come rescue the, your ass when people are doing that it has nothing to do with protest nothing nothing it's about taking advantage of a situation, trying to steal shoes, breaking in the local liquor store, stealing money. You know, who, they come, whoever they come across first is going to be the victim. You know, so if, you know, unfortunately, that's, you know. Yeah. But yeah, it's got nothing about protest and it shouldn't even be in the same page as protest. Yeah. Yeah. No, well, uh, you know, you're, what are you eating? What did you get from, uh, oh, what did you get from Hooters? What was on the menu? I got chicken quesadillas. Oh, okay. Nice, nice. <laughs> you know, pretty straightforward. Yeah. Um, yeah. So real Cujo wants to know how the fundraising was going, Kevin. You want to talk about that? For, uh, you were uh, yeah. talking about this. Oh, uh, yeah. About uh, this last just, week. Yeah. The fundraising is, 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 I mean, it's going. I mean, we got a goal of 2000. We've only got 1,025. I think with raffle tickets, maybe 1,065. I mean, not a thousand, one hundred sixty-five. So we're still, um, we're still needing any help anybody can give. It was uh, anything that you can do would be greatly appreciated. Yeah, just plug that one more time, um, you know, because there may be some folks that weren't watching mm -hmm. last week. All right, so we are doing um, uh, shooting for the cure on October fourteenth here in St. Louis, and what we're basically doing, uh, the event is called shooting for a cure, and we are having cancer patients, survivors, or those uh, immediately affected by it, like they lost a family member are going to be our competition shooters, if you will. And we're gonna bring in local instructors and uh, local comp shooters to be their coaches. And they're gonna coach them through a couple of really easy stages. Um, the shooters are going to absorb their coaches points and they'll be able to win uh, the top prize of a range pack, which is gonna include um, a custom, uh, custom engraved and done up Glock 42, um, ammo, range bag, um, ear and eye protection, the full, full throttle, man. They're gonna lead with everything. Um, and we're raising that money to give that money back to the cancer centers of uh, St. Louis, which what they do is they help people deal with the diagnosis of cancer. So you've been told you have cancer. What does that mean? How do you cope with it? Uh, how do you keep your mind straight? How do you focus on the future? How do you break it to the family and things of that nature? Uh, they keep them physically fit, teach them how to eat right and things like that. So that event is on the 14th. We have a GoFundMe, which uh, um, I will drop in here again for Hank to share. Um, uh, yeah, go ahead and put in the link, and I'll share it in the description. Oh. Yeah, I need to do that again. Yeah. Um, yeah. So. But it's great. It's a way for the, the two-way community just to give back and show people we care. Yeah. Absolutely. Give us the link. We'll put that up there so folks can. Um, we'll put it in the description. I'll share it with uh, folks here in the chat so everyone can see what we're talking about. All right, going to pull it now. We'll get that going. Somebody wants to know about the heat level of wings or something like that from. Well, that I'm eating? Yeah. This so, is hot. It's not bad. It's not. Yeah, it's hot. There it goes. I don't, I don't go crazy or anything like that. No. Yeah. So. No. My insides can't take all that too much. Yeah. But, you can't handle the heat. Well. Show them that you got dessert. So show them what? Oh, look what she brought me for oh, dessert. Okay, now we get to see the. What dessert. was left? Let's show, the, let's show it. I don't what know if it? I can lift it up without falling. Little bitty piece of the. That's top. your dessert. <laughs> That's all. I get. I get a bite. Yeah. <laughs> hey, you got you got warm food. <laughs> I'm lucky I got anything, right? Yeah. There's starving children in Africa that don't get that much chocolate cake. They don't get any actually. But. And I and I didn't have to cook tonight either, so that's good. So. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's good. You know, Peggy's taking care of the man who um, maintains the generators. Gen set. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. Cool. Um, all right. So. Kevin's Kevin's getting that link together. We'll yeah, we'll, we'll get that drop we'll get that worked right. out. Um, let's see. So we haven't. We let's talk about some new stuff other than than um, than that, which is uh, you know. Hank, I always give you these long links. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> we'll we'll throw it up there. Um, let's this. see what other. There was a couple of news things that I saw that I thought were interesting. Interesting. Okay, here we go, Walter. You are a big um, Anglophile. For anyone that doesn't know what Anglophile means, I'm I'm making up that Anglophile means uh, people like Walter who like 
the British. <laughs> oh, well, <laughs> Walter's like, what? Anglophile? How dare you? <laughs> uh, I could be totally wrong on that. Wait, now I'm going to have to search Anglophile. Hold on. Well, hang on. You're the guy that lived in England. Come on. What are you talking about? <laughs> I just like to visit. That's all. Oh, here we go. See, I was right with that one. A person who is fond of or greatly admires England or Britain. So that would be you. So this is a story for you, Walter, because we know we know you likes the British. So um, the pub life. Yeah. Yeah. Did you did you see this? I, I'm going to um, I'm going to send this to you. Father and son dredge weapons cash from UK River. Yes, I saw that. I was like, oh, shit, look at those guns. Yeah. You know, so I'm gonna, yeah, let me. I'm going to put this in the chat one more time, Walter, because you need to look at this. And I did identify I remember, some of the. Yeah, but but look at it again and identify some of these guns for us. Here, I'll put it in the chat for. I can tell you what's on this. I read the article. Okay, so what? Um, they found okay, um, smarty they pants. Found, they found M16 parts. They found Bren gun parts. They found, um, I think, AR-180 parts. I think there was bolt-action rifle parts. Yeah. Um, I think there was FAL parts. Right now, so for anyone who wants to look this up, it's on uh, it's on the firearm blog, and it's a father and son dredge weapons cast from UK River. A father and son from Somerset, UK, made a surprising discovery while dredging a local river for scrap with a magnet. They pulled up parts from dozens of rifles, pistols, machine guns, and shotguns. So um, Neil Hopkins and his son Billy, Billy's rusted haul included parts from an AK, two M16s, an M1 Garand, a Bren gun, a Lee Enfield rifle, number four, several STG 44s. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> and a number. <laughs> that's that is cool. But, they, but it all looks, it's pretty much trash. There's nothing yeah. in there that you could use. Yeah. The bad part is they think that some collector. Just decided to cut his guns up and throw them in the in a lake or whatever when they were trying to when they were collecting guns in England. Yeah, and because I mean, what are you supposed to? So, because all those things are illegal, and then what are you supposed to do, right? Like, how are you supposed to get rid? Well, you can go turn them in, but he probably said, "The hell with that," and he, you know, cut them up. I, I guess you know who knows, but yeah, I'm gonna put Kevin's thing in. I think that's definitely cool. You're out looking for some crap, and you pull out um, you pull out rifle parts. I mean. Whether they're good or bad, you know, as long as you don't pull out a bomb or something. But um, um, yeah, because you can, you can. I know there's lots of landmines and things like that. I don't know if they found all of the mines and landmines. And that's a con. Well, it's not so much in England, I think, but they find aerial bombs in England. But like in Russia, the people do the same thing in Russia. They go to these ponds and lakes that were near the conflict, and they take magnets and just throw it out and see what they pull up. You know and Sometimes they pull up a rifle, and other times they pull up an old hand grenade. You know, it's like, yeah. Mm -hmm. What is this thing you put in front of the camera? This is um, actually made from Bren gun gas pistons. Oh, okay. A, f a friend of ours, a recent uh, acquaintance that lives in England, is a the equivalent of a Class Three machine gun dealer here in the U.S. in England, and he deactivated like three thousand Bren guns. So these are all made from, this is a little figurine, like a little guy shooting, that's made from Bren gun gas pistons. That's pretty cool. Okay, Kevin, you're going to have to send us a shorter link. That's what I said, man. I sent this <laughs> long this, ass. This link is not on me. He needs to like, I'm like, I need coffee. Minimize that link. <laughs> I need coffee. Hold on. Minimize and, and that you know, link somehow. It's funny, on here, it's very, really short until I went to share it. And I'm like, damn, that's long. All right, hold on. Just yeah. copy exactly what I see. Yeah. So that was that was a cool one, Walter. Me, that was that was interesting news. Um, me, let me ask the question. What's up? This this shooting happened in 2011. What's taken so long? Uh, that was the thing. I, now what I will what I will say to be positive is that they wanted to make sure, even though it seemed there you go, Hank. Even though it seemed cut and oh, dry, for, for if the you love will. Of mercy. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I do that to him every time he asks me for something. I see. <laughs> Like where, what website is he searching? Um, it's it was one of those things where they were trying to make sure they had all their ducks in a row because you know the whole double jeopardy thing. So was to make sure they had all the ducks in a row before they they went through with it. So when they decided to go through with it, they they came well armed. I'd say so. That's what they say. It took them so long. They wanted to make sure they they were ready to go. 
Yeah, because usually stuff like that doesn't take that long to happen, but true. I don't know. It seems like a long time. Yeah. Um, so now, hold on. I, okay, I just put it in the description for anyone who's interested in that or people who are listening to this later on on iTunes. Let me remind everyone that we are we are on iTunes, so you can get your fix of uh, the Who Moves My Freedom podcast on iTunes. We're up there. I just put five more of those up there yesterday. Um, I know it's a little bit late, but, you know, due to not having electricity or data, that's how it goes down. So... Yeah, I think we're up to like episode fifty-five of the uh, podcast, guys. That's pretty good, man. That's so congratulations too. Yeah, um, I mean, this is episode sixty that that we're listening to right now. So here's another thing um, that I saw in the firearms on the firearms blog: IWI is phasing out the Tabor, the SAR. Yeah, they're sticking with the ninety-five, right? Yeah, I think they're phasing that out because of the X ninety-five. So. If you like, if you prefer the Tavor, this would be the time to go in. Which one is which one is more like what the Israelis use in the military? The Tavor. Um, see, that's a difficult. You know, I mean, the I think that they're using both, but I think mostly they're using ARs. To be honest with you, don't tell anyone that. <laughs> a lot of M4s, yeah. Yeah, if you ever wanted to buy a Tavor SAR bullpup, now is the time to act. IWI is phasing out the SAR for the X95. I'm one sure the decision makes perfect a, business sense. Yeah, one thing I guarantee there won't be a clearance sale, that's for sure. No. Um, but, this, but you know, some people do favor the Tavor. Like it's got, you know, people say that the uh, barrel has better accuracy and stuff like that. I have seen those reports, you know. Um, so there you go. If you're interested in that, if, you're, if you've just been waiting around. I didn't hear that tidbit. Yeah, yeah to see what's going to happen. There you go. You want to, you know, get in on that now. I've got both. <laughs> I got both. I got I both. Yeah, that, was, that was real smug. Like, oh, you, know. <laughs> you make a decision. I've I've had, got... I'm not. I'm not getting rid of my. Uh, I'm not getting rid of my Tavor. I like the X95 though. I used the X95 when I was training, um, and it was it was great. All and right. So gonna... let's put you on the spot for a second. I'm All gonna right. take over. I'm gonna put you on the spot. Oh boy. You're running the mill AR-15 versus a bullpup. Pros and cons, which one do you ultimately choose if the world goes chaotic and you can only have one? Go. Oh, easy question. Uh, that's, that's easy. AR-15. <laughs> There's no parts no part that gets of bricks. Yeah, it's pretty pretty easy for me. AR-15, you know, um, you're gonna, it's going to be easier for you to find parts and all that kind of stuff. You know, I like bullpups in there, and I'm not saying that you can't fight with a bullpup. You absolutely can. Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, some of them are more the parts and stuff like that are more available than others, but it's still not easy. So the only bullpup I know that you won't have the parts issues is the K&M. The one that's not out. No, 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 no. The K&M M17. Yeah. Remember we had uh, Ken from K&M. The M17 is using regular parts. So it's just that that chassis and all that oh. that's aluminum. You know, but he's using parts from he's using DPMS parts and things like that. So it, it would be relatively easy to find those parts and, uh, and and repair stuff if you had to and change out things. But other than that, man, um, I think the uh, the AR-15, I'm totally good with that. You know what I brought home for the storm? What? 12 gauge shotgun and my AK. One of my AKs. The AK? OK, you went with the AK. That's so, cool. Yeah. And, you know, I. I I mean, I had, I had, um, I mean, I have lots of things in the safes at home, but I just, those are, yeah. 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 So same here. We got plenty of stuff. I have like a 300 blackout AR 15 setup in my bedroom. And then I had I mean, the X 95 in like the living room. <laughs> right. We didn't have any, we didn't, as far as I know in this area, we didn't have any looting problems or any, you know, any more than anything else happening, you know, mm -hmm. um, I was a little concerned about the shop being sitting there all by its lonesome. You know, it, it doesn't, you know, my shop doesn't have anything that says, Hey, I'm a gun guy. So, um, yeah, there's Tyvin, no, Tyvin sending us news. He says, uh, today is the 203rd birthday of the star spangled banner. Well, okay. Mm -hmm. And war mm -hmm. says, which has the better trigger? Um, yeah. AR 15s have a better trigger, you know, but the triggers on bullpups are getting better. 
So, listen, you know what? It's it really all depends. I mean, you know, a bullpup is going to be more maneuverable than your than your normal length uh, AR-15 in the car. You can move it, swing it around, and stuff like that. But you know, you can always have an SBR. That's true. That's you right. know, if you don't want to do the SBR stuff, there you go. You have a pistol. Yeah. You know, then like, yeah. you know, if AR is like this, then you know we're yeah. Now that is an SBR. Some people don't want to do paperwork and all that, you know. You know what? In times of um, Armageddon and, and zombies, it doesn't matter. So yeah, and it's pretty easy to switch out the barrels and all that if you had to, you know. So listen, there's lots of options. The reason I just like bullpups, I just like the, uh, I just like it. So I'm just a fan of the bullpups. Have been for a long time, ever since I was a little kid living in England, looking at uh, my dad's popular mechanics and popular science magazines and all that stuff and there are bullpups in there so that's why I, I like the bullpup things but I know for a fact that you can use them you can fight with them they can save your life yeah okay. I had a I had a conversation with um Mike from uh, IWI and uh -huh. he was a uh, you know we, we stood there for a minute and, and had a conversation and I mean he makes a lot of good points for the bullpup I've just never I think my the reason I don't currently have one which I'm going to you know try to get one from them anyway um, is just because of the the price of them and I'm not saying they're overpriced I'm just saying because of what they cost it's like I can go get two really really nice ARs for the price of one you know it's the same thing that, that really like when you look at a scar I think a, the scar 17 is a heck of a rifle right but not saying it's overpriced but at 3300 bucks how many three always can you go back down the same same difference yeah, that's true. I mean, you you know, if price is an issue, well, you know, I get it. There you go. Price is an issue. Um, SBRs tend to be on the expensive side as well. If you're if you're just buying one, if you're not building one, if you build one, well, it could now, be cheaper. Now that same when I pulled out right there, you just build it as a pistol and put a brace on it. Yeah. You got your port means SBR. So yep. yeah. There's, you know what, there's lots of options out there for people, I think. Um, and people have defended themselves. There was a case that was in the news here in uh, Gainesville where this couple was in a hotel and the, the uh, woman's ex-boyfriend or something was stalking her. And he was trying to break into the hotel room through the window. He had a stire, didn't he? Yeah, this dude, that's why I know about it, because it had, the story had a stire og. <laughs> so the dude inside the hotel had a stire og. And wow, man, he, you know, he took that dude out. Just happened to have a star with him. You know? Yeah, he took him out. And that was a stand your ground issue and all that. And so never got charges pressed, um, still has his styrog, everything. So he should. It didn't make big news because everyone involved in that story was black. So the media didn't think that that, <laughs> that would be a good story. <laughs> of course not. You know, to make their point, you know, um, but there you go. You know, someone defending themselves with a styrog, no less. You know, you guys, you guys actually, it wasn't, um, it wasn't dealing with a bullpup or anything. But there is one case that happened in Florida that I that I use in a concealed carry class. I think was awesome. That Waffle House shooting. The Waffle House. Uh, uh, you guys had a guy in Florida. It, he was attacked by. It was like three racist white guys that was messing with him oh, at Waffle yeah, yeah, House. Yeah, 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 yeah. And they wind up. Uh, and I was I was teaching physical disparity, and I, that's what I used that for. And the guy did just an awesome job, but of course the news didn't push it everywhere. They couldn't, you know, it couldn't use. It, but it was three white guys and a girl, and um, a black guy and a Hispanic guy sitting in a Waffle House, and they came in and started harassing both of them, um, Hispanic slurs, and you know, or, and about the black guy making slurs. And one guy tried to shake. He shook the Hispanic guy's hand, I guess, in a, a way to apologize. The black guy refused to shake his hand politely. He hit him. The guy draws his gun and like gives him warnings and. Um, they they kind of walk away, but then one of the guys, the smallest one, it's always the little guy, the littlest <laughs> guy turns around, runs back in the restaurant and starts attacking him or trying to attack him. The guy steps back, fires a shot. He's steadily, steadily going to minimum force. He steps back again, fires a shot, steps like a third time, fires a shot. Then the guy finally runs off. Um, and I believe they, cra I know they crashed on the way to the hospital and uh, one of the guy that got shot died and they, they charged the other two with his murder. Uh, but that was a really, really good case that came out of Florida. You guys had a couple of good ones. Oh, okay. Yeah, I didn't see that. When, how long ago was that? Ooh, I know I've been using the video for about a year. Oh, okay. So at least that long. Hey, let me ask let me answer a question for Mark Wagner. Uh, we do have an adapter we're making for the tail hook for the Kest stop. As um, soon as my machinist returns from his um, evacuation to, 
a northern state. Um, <laughs> we're going to start making some more of those. So, yeah, we, we have that. We're, that's in the works here. So, Hey, um, can I give a shout out to a couple of people real quick? Absolutely. Um, all right. So, Joe, I believe you're in the, the feed here. Um, thank you very much for your fifty dollar donation to the shooting for the cure. All right, Joe Tenorelio, If I'm saying it right, I apologize if I didn't say it right. Uh, please charge it to my lack of uh, education and not anything else. And uh, let's see who else is this. And Smeggy, thank you, um, thank you very much for the for the donation as well. I appreciate you guys. Thank you so much for to donating yeah. for the shooting for the cure. Oh yes, and and from all of us, thank you. Thanks, Joe. That's very cool of you guys for supporting supporting that. Yes. You know, I appreciate it. Kevin appreciates it. Definitely. Walter, if he wasn't eating right now, even though the rest of us are all starving. Well, Hank, I got me some orange chicken coming. So oh, I'm gonna be oh, on your own oh, Excuse eat, me. Eat, okay. Eat up, no, just I'm I'm the only starving <laughs> one, I guess. <laughs> yeah. In front of him. I'm the only one starving here. Yeah, like a like a Somali. Oh, can I say something else like about a Somalian food? kid? What? All right. I, I want to say this too. Um, if you guys, I know you guys just had, you just pretty much had some looting, what no one was in protesting, but for everybody everywhere, man, no matter where you're at, um, when you are getting ready for things to go bad, I'm not a, a, a prepper by any uh, stretch of the imagination. I don't want to insult them by saying I am, because I know those guys are very, very serious and very, very methodical about what they do. Uh, what I will say is this, take the, take the opportunity and chance to allocate your funds to make sure you are ready in case things go bad, even if they only go bad for a week. Make sure that you are ready to deal with it. Because I'm telling you right now, real life story, man, before that, before the, the incident happened where I got guys rattling through my neighborhood and I got what looks to be a third world country going on where I got to run in and give cops guns for Christ's sakes. Um, you, you think it's a game until it happens. Um, so, you know, be ready. I'm not saying be ready to go outside and start slaughtering people. That's not what we talk about. I'm just saying be ready in case Anarchy comes to your front door, you know, spend a little time and think about what that looks like for you. Yeah, absolutely. Um, now, there's a couple of things. Uh, Lola wants me to talk about the uh, I guess California passed a bill to take guns from those in the quote unquote hate crime loophole. So, um, so let's, see, let's see what happens in California. You yeah, let's look, let's look that up and see what that's all about. You go on the internet now and you do like what you say something somebody else doesn't like and they report you as being a hate crime person and they come take your guns? Oh, yeah, that's the one where they can... Oh, I think I know what that one is. Yeah. Yeah, California, man. You, they're, they're just yeah, grinding away. Um, so this is like... Uh, I guess this is on guns.com. California passes bill to take guns from those in the hate crime loophole lawmakers this week unanimously approved the bill to strip gun rights from those convicted of misdemeanor hate crimes uh, AB 785 passed California legislator without a single no vote and is backed by assemblyman Reggie Jones Sawyer uh, Democrat Los Angeles who argues a proposal um, heading to Governor Brown's desk how are so we that's uh, how easy is that to get? That's the only thing I'm curious about now. Hey, bulletin, bulletin, bulletin here. Guess what? What? I got my power on. I got my power on. Is I that get, your dance? I get some AC tonight to sleep in. Yeehaw. <laughs> what dance is that, Walter? Good. What dance is that? You got a name for that? What's that? I'm sorry. You got a name for that dance, man? That's a happy dance. <laughs> <laughs> it's called the funky white man dance. Everybody, there you go. Everybody that I've talked to, everybody I've talked to that told me that power came on, I guarantee you they're doing a happy dance. I guarantee you, because ain't nothing worse than having the power off. <laughs> well, yeah, congratulations. We are happy for you that you got power back. We have a generator running too, so I wasn't like I was sitting with no generator or something like that, but yeah, yeah. But you know, I had just, a just for those people who are going to ask, I'm sure you were doing it safely, and you had your house connect disconnected from the grid. Oh right? no, no, no! I just basically the gen set sitting outside, and I just have cords running inside. That's it. You know, no, I no, always, I'm talking about you know, like yeah, you you don't have um, like you know how they always say when you set up a generator, make sure it's not connected to the grid. So well, yeah, feedback. Turn, yeah, mm -hmm. you turn the incoming power off and then switch everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna, yeah. I'm gonna finally work on that. I think I've been procrastinating for years, so I think. I'm uh, Wardex says that's the Keller Waltz. 
Um, yeah, go ahead. Bring shame to the name of Keller. AC's on tonight. There's going to be a happy dance with yeah. my woman. That's what yeah. I'm saying. Uh, yeah. Okay. Oh, wow. <laughs> going to be some loving. I hope that food was sufficient. Oh, <laughs> Take wow. your vitamins. She's. I'm fed, and the AC's on. We're good to go. Okay. I hope there's still some little blue pills left on the on the bedside table. <laughs> Where can I get some? Anybody got a line on some? <laughs> Lola, uh, you, you're gonna have to get a prescription if you want to get if you want Lola to fill that. Unless you know a salesman or something, you know. Uh, no, no, we don't. <laughs> okay. Well, that's that's yeah. what you're supposed to say. Anyway. Uh, we need Lola's license. Thank you very much, Walter. <laughs> I wouldn't. I wouldn't insinuate anything. You know? Yeah. Okay. No, I'm just making it clear. Okay. All right. For legal right. purposes. Okay. No. No. Um, I can listen. I can tell you. I can give you a little uh, hint. A little tip. A little tip. This is a top tip. You know what's good? Good for the good for the Yang. Like for the Yang. Yeah. yeah. Um, Guinness Stout. <laughs> Guinness Stout. There you go. Really? So, yeah. Guinness Stout is good for that. It's good for your blood pressure. It's also good for like, you know, like pregnant women. It's good to drink Guinness Stout when they're when they're trying you know, to, to help pregnant? them out with the No, no, not when they're trying. Who knows what they drank when they got pregnant, but it's good when you're having like those pains and all that kind of stuff. It's good for the blood pressure. So there you go. Guinness Stout helps you get the blood pressure up. Uh, Tyvin sent so, me some info on that uh, the loophole on the hate crime thing. Yeah. So also, if you would have had the spicy wings, the, sp the pepper and the spicy wings, I know that from uh, Lola's people. You know, Lola's African Africans. Yeah, that's consume that's a lot of pepper. Pepper is also good for the for the business. And, and how do you know so much about this? Yeah, I, I used to live in Africa. Lola wants to know how do I know about this? <laughs> the internet. Come on, you got the internet. <laughs> So there you go, Walter. You got lots of things. You know. All right. Well, I'm going to take you up on all that stuff. And the main thing, I'm going to be sleeping. Yeah. I don't know if you've been storing up your energy, so to speak, over yeah. <laughs> over not having electricity. <laughs> I had, well, anyways, that's a whole nother story. But um, yeah, yeah, you know. So. My, <laughs> my sweet wife never. You know, yeah. yeah. So uh, you know, I hope you have some Guinness out there in the fridge. Oh, I know what would be the okay. best. Kevin, serious, by the way. If anyone hears the sound, this is Kevin packing up. Oh, magazines. my bad. Loaded, loaded magazine. No, it's cool. No, not a problem. That's all right. Yeah, I like the sound <laughs> of Ammo Hit magazines. Yeah. Kevin is like, Kevin is like seriously, just studiously, you know. Now, how come you don't have like a, you should have a magazine loader? <laughs> I do, but I knew it would be too loud for the, the, the show, so. No, we could have we could have reviewed it right here, man. If you have a magazine, which magazine loader do you have? I got the Caldwell AR Fast Loader. I can go grab it. Yeah, that, go get it and let's see if it works or not. Right. That kind of a, that's kind of a big thing, isn't it? Yeah, it's a big one. Yeah, yeah, that's the one that you just like throw all the ammo in there and then yeah, and slap it together. Can you go grab it? Yeah, uh, Walter M King wants to know if you have any recommendations for scopes for the SHTF fifty. Oh dear. Um, it kind of depends on your budget. Um, um, What's rated for a 50? Um, well, you know, what I always tell people is if you're looking to buy a scope, ask the people or the people that make the scope if it'll work on a 50 cal. You know, just flat out ask them. You know, if they, if they hesitate and go, well, uh, then that ain't your one. Uh, I know Millet. Millet makes some scopes that are rated for 50 cal, and they say it right in their advertising. Um, who else? And once again, it's kind of you start out in that like about that three hundred dollar range price wise, and you steadily go up. So it's going to be some money for for yeah. Uh, and it, you know, if, if, if you get a millet, it'll probably work fine for you. Um, the the Bushnell um, oh, what is it? Uh, God, the one line. Let's, um, it's let's, go, let's use this thing that the Egyptians invented called googling it. Yeah, there you go. You said there's a Bushnell for fifty. Um, the Tas Tasco Super Sniper. It's owned. The uh, Tas Tasco is owned by Bushnell now. That's been used for a long time on fifty cal rifles. Um, of course, you can go up to Night Force and Leopold and stuff like that. Um, but then you're talking, you know, eight hundred, twelve hundred, fifteen hundred, two thousand dollars. So, like I said, it all depends on your budget. Yeah. Um... Yeah. So there's a. You know, are you talking about the Bushnell? Uh, tactical Elite. Well, that could be. I think um, actually Barrett was using that on some of their guns for a while. The Tactical Elite. I think so. Yeah. 
Once again, you might want to contact Bushnell and just flat out ask him. Yeah, that's good advice. To just definitely check with uh, the, the manufacturer of whatever scope you're interested in yeah. and see. Because that's not that tactical elite is not available. I'm looking on Amazon, not available. Even even the so, best scopes break. So yeah. Just yeah. make sure whatever you get, make sure it has good warranty. So because if you can if it breaks and you know you get another scope, you can put it on your on your three oh eight or whatever. Yeah, we need to do some kind of testing of that at some point and well, I mean, see what's does, going does on. Primary there. arms have one that are ready to stay up for a fifty? Um I've got to find out from them. I gotta yeah, find out from primary can, arms. I, I tell you what's what rated. We'll put that on an 18 inch, and if it survives an 18 inch, it'll survive an 18. It's going to be one of their higher, more higher end ones. Probably so. For sure. Um, you know, I would guess we should probably look into that and, and find that out. For anyone who's looking for any optics, I'm not saying 50, but we've got a list in this video of um, links to primary arms to a bunch of optics that you can get, like uh, free shipping plus either the free scope or rings that go along with that goes along with that optic. Yeah, and, and so we got those. Said the millet he had broke. So, oh, he did. Okay, yeah. um, Kevin, you got yep. that thing there? Let's see it. Let's. Are you loading it no. already? No, I'm yeah, just getting it see. already. So this is. Let me show you the pack too. So it's the AR-15 Tac 30. Try to make sure get it on the screen there. Yeah, there's you got a little bit of glare. Okay. And there's the thing in the thing itself. Kind of. Okay. That's see. interesting. Okay. How the hell does that work? So it is um it is once you get used to it, it's not bad. So um, so you now the cool thing about this is it is quick, but the bad thing about it is you have to take a little second to get it set up. So what you have to do is take your take your ammo and you're gonna to have to put it in here. I believe it is down in this one. So you take your magazine, get an empty mag, take your magazine. Other way, crap. You load your mag in, like so. Okay, let me lock. Let me lock this on you so we can see that. That's how you load your mag in. Okay, so this will be with the ammo pointed down. So then, what you do is you have to take your ammo. So I'm just gonna put it on my lap for a second, well, before I can put the ammo in. So then you get your ammo. And it does it in three groups of tens. So I'm just gonna put 10 in to show you. Now this is great for out at the range and you know, you got time. I wouldn't do this in an emergency unless you already had um, perfectly prepped. That's what you gotta teach the children how to do. So they're, when you're when you're holding down the fort, they're loading mags behind you. Oh, that's a good idea. My, yeah, my son, my son can, can load mags with his hand I think I think something might be wrong with the kid though. He's always looking for a reason just to pick up the gun. Uh, Lawrence Lerwick says that um, 704 did a video on the SHTF 50 and the scopes that he has. Oh yeah. So yes, if yes. anyone wants to uh, check out 704 Tactical, yes. he's got some videos on the on the 50 where he's got uh, some scopes on there. Yeah, and he's um I gave I gave him that um, rifle to 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 shoot. So he's just shooting it. So he's shooting stuff and shooting it and. And uh, yeah, so that'd be a good. Uh, he's giving it no quarter either. So, um, you know, there's no uh, no uh, no uh, specifications on what he could and couldn't do. So, you know. yeah. Okay. So, so it's got it's got ten loaded in there. Now, if Hank, it's up to you how you want to do it. I can show just the ten, or I can load all thirty and show you back to back. Oh uh, yeah, show me all thirty. Do okay. it because you can only do ten at a time with that. No, you, you, for every you get three pushes for each push is ten rounds. Oh okay. So, so if you have a 10 round mag or a 20 round mag or, or 30. Yeah. Okay, this does not seem faster. Oh, uh, once you get, in. now here's the, here's the trick to this thing. I will tell you the trick to it to make it go real quick. Depending on what ammo you order and who you're carrying, because if you get the ammo, if you get the boxes of the ammo, like some white boxes where it already comes with the rounds facing down, you literally open a box and let them fall and you're good to go. Oh, okay. Yeah, these uh, because these uh, these ZQIs actually come packed in thirty. They're actually thirty rounds in here instead of twenty, so it takes a little. Uh, a little while. Yeah, the the IMI ammo, the Israeli stuff, comes in thirty round boxes too. I like the thirty round box stuff. Well, it makes sense if you got a thirty round mag, you get a thirty round box, but. 
Oh, okay. Facing this thing. My phone is beeping. All right, got some new people coming in. Okay, guys, don't forget to uh, like this video and share it on the social medias. Be glad to see everyone. So that we could, you know, yeah. Hey, what about the? Uh, hey, what do you all think about? What do you think about um, these people protesting Kid Rock? I didn't realize he. I know he's running for office. I didn't realize he was getting protested. Yeah, he's just holding some concerts up in up in Michigan, and these people are showing up to protest at his concerts. It's like. Yeah. Um, well, yeah. We can't rock here, but I think that started because he was supposed to be running for some kind of office. Yeah, he's running, running for office. So. He's run for hey, that's what happens, man. You're gonna, you know, that's just come. That just comes with the, you know, well, being it, out there. I'm sure he gets that, protested anyway. That's a sign, though. He he's a serious threat if they're organizing protest against him. So, I like it. Yeah. Work it. You work it just like Trump worked it. You use that protest to make your name, get your name on the TV every other second of the day, and you know, boom, you get elected. I don't know, yeah. Kid Rock, I'm not saying he's a dumb guy, but he's a smart guy. I don't think I've ever just listened to him talk. Yeah, he, you know, he's not, he's not a dumb guy because he's got supposedly more money than, than the Queen. So he's invested his money and he's done, he's done things right. So, um, okay. so yeah, you know, he's a little on the, he's on the outside. He's kind of Ted Nugent, but, um, <laughs> but there's nothing wrong with Ted either. <laughs> but, you know. Yeah, so, um, yeah, you know. I don't know. I don't know what like where he ranks on the Mensa scale or anything like that. But you know, does that matter really? Yeah, he's a gun guy. That's all that really matters to me. We've had a lot of smart people in office, and they're they're about as dumb as a box of rocks. So, when it comes to common sense, so yeah, so. this loader is not really taking that long. It's kind of me taking that long because I got stuff scattered, <laughs> but I'm almost there. Yeah. So We've got lots is. of people that are glad that we're safe. Jay Hike, a whole bunch of people, like, you know, happy that we're safe. Chris B says, loves Uncle Ted. Oh, yeah, yeah. So yeah, Ted is Nugent is cool. I've met him a couple times at uh, shot shows and NRAs well, and stuff like that. Let me that. tell you my Ted Nugent shot show story. Okay. Where, um, this is, I went to the shot. This is like one of the first times I went to Las Vegas at shot. And I was with somebody else that I used to work for. And we come walking out of the, um, we come walking out of the show that day and we're, you know, we were staying at the um, Stratosphere. That's where it was. And uh, it was like the cab line was really long. So we get in the cab line, and I see this guy, and I go, that's Ted Nugent. And the uh, guy I'm with goes, no, it isn't. I said, yeah, that's Ted Nugent. He's with his wife and his kid, you know. So they're, like, um, waiting in line, too, and it's, you know, he's in the cab line. You know, he's a regular old guy. And next thing you know, they get out of line, they leave, and we leave, too, because the cab line wasn't going anywhere. And they just start walking. So we're walking behind him, and she's like, his wife's going, we're going to be late to where we're going. It's because of you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and this, that, and the other, you know. And it's like, uh, mm -hmm. so we finally walked a little faster and caught up. And you Ted Nugent, right? He goes, yeah, I'm Ted Nugent, yeah, yeah. And it's like, you know. So that's my Ted Nugent story. Oh, okay. That's All nice. Right. That's before I was a famous that's internet nice. blogger, you know. Oh, oh, okay. No, that's nice. No, uh, Nugent's cool. He's no. all right. He's a funny guy. Just like He's just like everybody else. Yeah, he's a funny guy. Uh, I, I, you know, I don't want to one up you, but maybe I should tell my my Ted Nugent oh, you story can tell it. about that. Yeah, yeah. I, I was in NRA, I think. I think it was NRA show, and um, you know, he had a bunch of security guards with him and stuff like that. And he came through this booth where I was. I think he was doing like a an appearance there or something like that, or the he was getting interviewed. So um, I think it was the NRA a couple of years ago where there were a lot of um, the media was saying there were no black people <laughs> in the NRA show. I can't remember where that was. Uh, Lolo will probably remember. Anyway, so, we, you know, he came up to me and he was uh, I said, hey, you know, can, can I take a picture with you? He was like, sure. So we're taking a picture. And then he whispers in my ear. He was like, yeah, I think me and you are the only black guys in this show. Being a musician, a musician from Detroit, he always talks about the influences that he got from the black artist and the rhythm and blues people yeah. and stuff. So, you know, that's yeah. funny to say that. But. Well, yeah, I know a lot of these guys just get labeled like racist and uh, all that kind of stuff when they're pro gun and all that. But you know, that's not. No, yeah, that's easy. It's it, that's that's the stopgap thing now. Just also be a racist no matter what, and you know. Yeah. So, 
Okay, so Kevin, um, are you ready for this? Can we see some ready. magic? No, so that was definitely my fault, but <laughs> drum roll, please. Yeah, All right. uh, this is how it goes when you're making videos. Okay. So here is the guys for, for anybody just tuned in. This is an impromptu review, because Hank's that kind of person, of the Mag Charger yeah. AR. We put you on the spot. That's what we do. Yep, uh, yep. Tech 30. All right. Uh -huh. So, and they even show on the back too. And if you have like 20 round boxes or if you're a guy that actually uses stripper clips, how much easier it can be? Yeah, it might be a little faster. Yeah. Um, once you got them in here, what you have now, you guys can see. I'm try to tilt it where you can see the ammo. Uh, see. Can so the see? ammo has to be okay. So it has to be precisely dropped into these things. Yep. And three rows. So if you have boxes of ammo, like you know, some of the boxes that come where you can just open it and they're, they're the already whole row. Oh, okay, you can. Those are the best because you literally open it and. Let one row fall in there. You use the box as kind of a divider on the lines. Let one row fall, and then move the box and let the second row fall in your. I mean, it's really okay. Good. So let's see. Load that magazine. Let's see what happens. All right. So here it is. Now I'll try to hold. It's meant to be on the table. So I'll yeah, hold to... it up. We want to make sure you're not tricking us. All right. So I'm gonna pull this back. The first ten is ready to go into the mag. Okay. Okay. Second ten. Third ten. Okay. So then you take your mag. Out of this guy, and probably I, a mag release somewhere. Yeah, I forgot to do this crap. I just had I had this one up for review too. Uh, but no, oh, come out of there. Hold on, that's my fault. Now you guys know what happened behind the scenes on these videos. <laughs> uh, but there it is. Okay, it's a button up top. It's really easy. It's a button up top. Oh, about it. oh there you go. It's a mag release. Okay. Yes, yeah, mag release button, and boom, there you go. Okay, go thirty loaded. Here, okay, empty. all the rounds are right. in there. So now that was the first one. That was the first one. We'll give you a mulligan on that one. Um, <laughs> let's. <laughs> someone wants to know what cereals on the fridge. I don't even know what that means. Oh, um, uh, maybe maybe your kids go. Your, your kids are getting cereal. Mom, that's got, probably what's going. Yeah, my kids. Uh, I see. Is it Flintstones? You came today. <laughs> Cheerios. No. And uh, Frosted Flakes. Have sugar on it. Fruit Loops. No. Yeah, Fruit Loops is one. Oh, really? okay. Uh, it's one Cheerios. No. Uh, Frosted Flakes. <laughs> yes, that is one. So yeah. two more to go. Uh, no, oh, there's four up there. Yeah, and that was just the four you can see. Oh no, I have no idea. <laughs> and then we got so we got Fruit Loops, Frosted Flakes, uh, chocolate Lucky Charms, which are magically delicious, <laughs> and Golden Grams. Oh, golden grass. Okay, they there. are magically delicious. Yeah. The chocolate, the chocolate Lucky Charms will change your life. I think one of your kids is going to the fridge and getting cereal. <laughs> yeah, probably. They don't tell <laughs> yeah. My, my, so. my son is actually, because I, I, you know, I'm not a coffee drinker. I like to drink the flavored cream with a little bit of coffee. Okay. So I'll have that. Now he's like following behind me. Now he has to get a cup of coffee. So he's probably in there with a bowl of cereal, a cup of coffee, and a glass of orange juice like he's 30 years old. Yeah. So Ken B says that Kid Rock did a show earlier in the month wrapped in a Confederate flag. Okay. Oh, right. So, well, I you mean, know, that, that's I guess a, that depends on what you feel about the Confederate flag. That's a that's a that's a protest thing too. Remember that. Yeah, I mean that doesn't. I don't give a crap. It about doesn't that. mean anything to ninety nine point nine percent of the world. So yeah. Um, you know, right. I'm sure that there's some people that have their things against the Confederate flag or whatever. Yeah, that's. <laughs> Yeah, so well, ask something about uh, some someone has something against everything, you know. Yep, yep. yep. So you know, it'd be the same way. He's a, if he's, I, a, he's a country boy, so I mean, I don't, you know. And we talked, we talked about that a couple uh, week ago or last week or whatever. But you know, in the same thing that people got to remember is this: why we all have to be a little bit more tolerant. Now, it's back to the I can't tell you, like I said the last time we had, we talked about this. I can't tell a guy who honors that flag, the rebel flag. I can't tell him why he's representing it and what he believes it stands for. Only thing I can do is tell him how I feel about it and he can tell me why he represents it and why he has so much pride in it. After that, you move on. I don't really think yeah. it's, you know, it's it's one of, because it, I think what people forget is that we can educate each other. Hey, dude, I know you believe for, you know, a hundred years that this flag stood for this, but let me tell you what we really represent. It'd be no different than if a, a black guy came out wrapped in the traditional African colors. Like, do you all of a sudden say he hates white people? No, to love me is not to hate you. And that's just mm -hmm. the truth. I can love me without hating you. And so people got to be less sensitive about that. Ask him, why do you represent the flag, K-Rock? And see what he says. If he says, yeah, because whites are right and 
all the rest of you guys need to get out of my country. Okay, maybe you don't vote for that guy. Yeah, and then that's a different thing, but, you know. Um, yeah, well, you know, yeah. Once again, it could be just a protest thing on his part. Yeah. It is what it is, you know. It doesn't. Um, it doesn't bother me. So I know it does bother people. Dude, so I there you go. You. Okay, are you, re are you reloading that because we we're supposed to be timing you? Oh, dang, I didn't know I was under pressure. Damn it! Damn. I, I, think, yeah. I think. No, no. Start all. Of, no, don't start from zero, man. You already put some in there. All right. All right. It's empty. Okay. All right. All right. So gotta, okay. Gotta, what time is it? Time is eight thirty-one p.m. <laughs> All right, hold on. I gotta find it. I don't have any. I'm not, I think I'm out of ammo. Though. Well, because Tyvin is challenging you. Tyvin yeah. says he can have load. He could have loaded two sixty-round drum mags in the time that you did that. So hey, we should challenge hey, Tyvin. 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 You hear me? Shit. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm All right. Put me under pressure. You're gonna get. You're gonna get labeled. Yeah. For so <laughs> right now, I'll be known as the slow mag loading guy. Yeah. On, uh, real Cujo. <laughs> yeah. Real Cujo wants to know um, if uh, we have a sound meter to check the Maxim nines. Um, no, those things are expensive and intricate. And no, we use our arrow meter. But. Um, you know, if if anyone does, I'm sure there's someone out there that has all that equipment that uh, works properly and they know how to calibrate it and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, they can, they can figure they can figure that out. Uh, Chris Servant says he's a Dukes of Hazard TV show fan. I watch the Dukes of Hazard and no, you know, no issues with watching the Dukes of Hazard. So there you go. What do you guys like better, the Dukes of Hazard? What? The re if you saw the remake of that especially, I don't see how you can have a problem with that movie. Oh, yeah. okay. So I was just about to ask that question. Never saw the remake. What's better, the TV oh. show or the remake movie? TV. Boom. Go ahead, answer. I'm going to say I like the TV show better. I, I know that the movie had, uh, what's her name? Um, what the hell is the name of that? Daisy Dukes, baby. Daisy Dukes, yeah. yeah. It was uh, the, the movie. Simpson. Yeah, the movie had Jessica Simpson. Um, uh, of chicken of, of chicken of the sea fame so i'm not i'm not knocking jessica simpson's cuteness or anything like that but i didn't like the movie so there you go the tv show was a lot better all right am i loading this thing or what oh 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 so you're ready okay yeah well that was fast okay go ahead do it okay. you doing all 30. press the ejection oh there you go all right there you go bam okay now yeah. to make this scientific, Kevin, you got to do that one more time. Oh, <laughs> you're killing me, man! You're killing me. It's eight thirty-three. <laughs> you're killing me. Oh man! All right, no, that I, was good. I have to go get some more ammo and another man. <laughs> okay, and someone wants to know what are you getting prepared for? So there's some people that just came in and they want to know what the hell? Why is Kevin? Loading up these magazines. All right. So if you, really, if you want to know, I have some mags upstairs already loaded. These are going to be the reserves. What I normally so here's my philosophy, and then I'll show people real quick what we what I did earlier. Um, but my philosophy is this: for my my long gun, I always have about uh, anywhere between five to eight mags loaded. The reason for five being my minimum. The way I run my kit uh, with my belt, I can run uh, a total of six mags. So. I normally is one loaded by the rifle then for storage they're immediately you know only a few feet away there are there's ammo so one for the rifle five on my body so i'm always ready to go extras can go in the pockets they can go in a dump pouch or whatever um so that's why i always have those these are being loaded uh because things could happen so if things don't happen cool when i go out to the range i already got loaded mags when i go do videos if they do happen i'm, I'm well prepared so i want to have about 16 or 17 loaded uh, I normally just leave my PMAX hanging up in the closet, but now I'm going to load about half of them just to have them ready. Um, yeah. Uh, then what we talked about earlier, and I won't take up too much time, uh, but what we talked about earlier was being prepared. So I actually, here's my kit, or here's my carrier anyway, all right? So I got my hydration pouch on it on the back, all right? I do have level fours in this thing. Um, I already got my sling on it. So my rifles all have... Um, the QDs, the QDs in them. So mm -hmm. no matter which one of my rifles, this is what I mean by being prepared. So no matter which one of my rifles I pick up, it's got a QD. And so my kit already has the slink in it. I don't have to worry about that. Um, and um, by the way, Mark Wagner is sharing a deal on speed loaders. 
So Mark Mark Wagner is the deal, dude. Uh, he says for a deal on on loaders, check out Speed Loader Z and use discount code Wagner SL. The S and the L are capitalized for ten percent off entire site. No, that's so nice. that's Wagner W A G N E R S capital L capital for ten percent off. Oh, hey, Lawrence Lawrence Lerwick, uh, he brought up the Magula or Magula. I like those too. Yeah, the I Magula. like those. Too. They're good. Yeah, because they load and they unload, which is cool. Yeah. Oh, and big thanks out to Mike S. Uh, he just donated some money to Shooting for the Cure. Oh, cool. Oh, awesome. Thank you, Mike S. We should appreciate we should. it, man. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we, but, oh, we appreciate so, we appreciate that. Thank you very much. For guys that uh just recently tuned in, so you can go back up and you can you like you know I'm pretty sure he doesn't want me to talk about it for another 15 minutes. But the what happened is um in St. Louis we have a basic long story short we have a cop that did something very wrong back in 2011. Uh, this particular police officer um, did have a right to be pissed. Long story short, they stopped the car. Um, words were exchanged. The gentleman driving the vehicle did back into the police cruiser. Could have potentially ran over the officers. That is legit. Um, he took off. The cop chased behind him. Uh, Stokely fired several shots into the vehicle, hopped into the police cruiser. Uh, they chased him down. They got him stopped. This cop actually brought to work with him an AK pistol. Uh, and he uses the AK pistol against the gentleman. And he's uh, being heard saying in the police cruiser, uh, I'm going to kill this mf -er. Now, like I've told people that if somebody tries to run me over with a car, I might say something like that, too. So I'm not really hype about that because it's adrenaline. You're pissed. I get it. But then actually go get an AK pistol out of your police vehicle, um, which is against policy, by the way, um, and to use that gun to surround the car and then shoot him. Uh, then return back to your police cruiser, grab a revolver, toss the revolver into the car. And the only DNA that's on that revolver is yours, not his. Um, yeah, it doesn't look good for you. So. Uh, the judge here that's rendering the verdict, um, they know what the verdict is going to be as of three weeks ago, and they're taking their time releasing it, and people have promised to shut the city down worse than Ferguson. So that's what I'm getting ready for, long story short. Okay, cool. Um, okay, so Jay Hike wants to know best way to store ammo, in mags or clips? Well, well, a clip. You mean like a stripper clip? Uh, I'm, yeah, I'm not sure what clips he's talking about there. I'm assuming. Yeah, stripper clip would be great because I mean, he said mags, so we know. Like he probably wants to know, you know, do you store it in the mag or you know, so maybe that you know. Theoretically, your mag, if you store them for long periods of time in your magazine, the spring's going to suffer. Uh, I don't. Yeah. So stripper clips don't have that problem. No, because it's just it's just yeah, it's just stripper. yeah. But you better have a stripper clip guide when it comes time to to. Uh, Exit stage left or, or load mags, but yeah, I don't know how like what kind of tests people have done to see how long. Um, Kevin, you have any input on that? I left the I left the P mag loaded for three years, and it fired. Oh, okay. It was, wow. it was a total accident too. Like I didn't scientifically do that. Like I left it. I know it was three years because I remember buying a lot of them. I bought, and I dropped this one. It was a particular P mag. I dropped it, but I remember about the time a month I had bought it, and I dropped it. And when I dropped it. When I found it at the bottom of my stuff, I'm like, oh, damn, it's been here for three years, and it's loaded. Oh, here would be a good time to shoot it. I took it out and ran. I think I had 27 rounds in it, and it, it ran fine. Yeah. Not saying yeah. that you're not causing any kind of damage, but then I also look at it like this. What are PMAT? What are it, $14, 15 bucks? Eight you know? something, if you know where to go. Uh, depends, yeah. You know. Yeah, I mean, so and if you do, if you have it loaded for, you know, Armageddon or, you know, whatever, and all right, in two years, the spring goes bad, go out and spend another 10 bucks to get another one. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. Um, okay, so you know what? We should mention this. Um, there was like, I guess this is news that's out there. There was a shooting at a school in, uh, I think it was Washington. Multiple victims in shooting at Freeman High School. One student dead, suspect detained. One student was killed and three others were injured in a shooting Wednesday morning at Freeman High School south of Spokane. Was it student on student or what? what yeah, and the sole suspect was detained. Uh, yeah, witnesses said the student who died was a sophomore boy and three injured were girls. The shooting happened in a hallway outside of a biology classroom. Okay. So, you know, we can go into it. That's unfortunate. You know, definitely, uh, you know, these are the horrible things that happen. Yep. You know, um, and... Uh, 
you know, I think making schools like, you know, no gun zones and all that doesn't. Or turning them into, or turning them into prison camps are not a good idea either. I don't think so. Yeah. So well, they got, the, they got, they're all fenced in and you come in and out and you get, I mean, yeah. So how did I go to high school without having to go through a chain link fence to get into the grounds of the high school? I don't know. I mean, because you went back in the days and, and a long time ago, people didn't feel like this was a, I had a whole house to, full of guns. I think unfortunately nowadays we just have more people who are angry. I mean, you know, I think that we always had angry people that did bad things. We always had that. That's connected to human beings. I think we just have more people like that. I think I was reading through this story and it said that this kid like sent out letters saying that he was going to do something stupid. I don't know what kind of uh, how long that warning was, but apparently no one did anything about it. That's the way that it goes down, you know, um, and it's unfortunate. So as yeah. someone who has kids in school, no one wants to go through that. I wish they would protect schools better. How do you do that? You know, I got a, I got an interesting story about that. So back when I was in high school, <clears throat> years ago, all right, so <laughs> when I was back in high school, um, the school I went to had, uh, we had security guards, we had metal detectors, and secured doors. So in order to go through school, every year going to high school, you had to be checked before you can come in, all right? So that was part of it, no matter which entrance you came in. In my sophomore year, which made me transfer schools, my sophomore year, uh, I went into school, went into the classroom and next thing you know you know how the kids get to whispering in the class and so i peek my head outside the door and there are guys in very cheap blue jackets with three letters across the back of them in yellow all right then it was a few of them atf fbi walking the halls of the school they wound up you know because they had to release a letter to the parents and stuff what happened is one of the kids I guess by somebody in his neighborhood was uh, he got convinced to bring a duffel bag full of guns to school and sell them. They bribed one of the security guards to let them in a door unsecured. So he got through the door by his bribe and stored the guns in his locker and was selling the damn guns like skills at school. All right. And wow. then, of course, taking the money back to whoever gave him the guns. So right. ultimately, there unfortunately, you can't stop crime it's going to find its way wherever it wants to go um that particular case they took a duffel bag a kid some money a bribe and they start selling them in the high school that had metal detectors and secured doors and security guards yeah how do you stop it um there's no way to stop this 100 percent. i know people there were some questions i think vanessa kitty was asking like what do we think about teachers being armed and all that kind of stuff i think there's lots of things that we have to do because it's not just the uh domestic things like this that could happen where a kid is just unhappy, bored, miserable, and then decides to do something um, damaging to his other fellow students. There's lots of things that could happen. I mean, terrorists can can realize, come to the realization that that's a weak point in our security and do a lot of damage and, and, and you know, really get headlines and all that kind of stuff that they're looking for by targeting schools. So, yeah, I think that we should do things like that um to to try to mitigate these problems but ultimately you're always going to have uh people doing bad things it's just a symptom of of the society of who we are now that there's people out there that want to do destructive things and there's not really much you can do about it except to be prepared for that moment when you know when you're there in that situation that you and you have to make the decision of either fighting back or just praying for your life um hey. That's it, right? I mean, yeah, and I think I, I don't disagree with that. And I also think that although, though, like my wife is in education, right? So I have the I've went to schools a lot and watched teachers, and I mean those people are busy, man. I don't know if anybody's ever went and watched a teacher actually run a classroom, but I mean, my God, they got a lot going on. And I'm not against them being armed, but like in Missouri. Uh, we have the right to arm teachers here if you can get it approved through all the bureaucracy. Uh, however, it's stated that in the law that if they, I'll summarize it, if they, if it can be proven that they allow a student access to a gun, it could be your keys are on the table, but the gun is in a lockbox in top of the, the safe, you know, across the hall or whatever. But since the kid could get the key or the key rings that had the key on it, then you could be fired. You know, so then you start putting a lot of pressure on them. So how much training are they going to get? 
And so I agree they should be or they could be, but how, how are we going to train them? Look at the people that actually go out and train more often than not, and when stressful situations happen, they freeze up. All right? They really don't know what to do. Um, and then how do you equate that to maybe 40 kids running and screaming, and you're trying to maintain them while using a firearm that you probably haven't picked up since you went and qualified with it eight months ago? So I think it's a, I think it's a great idea. But if we're going to do it, we have to really get out there and really get these teachers trained up. So, yeah, it should happen, but we just shouldn't run them through a basic concealed carry permit class and say, all right, good luck. We need to yeah, get also, them. it doesn't have to just be the teachers. It could be lots. You know, you can have people yeah. volunteer to do that. You can, you know, there's True. lots of different things. Ultimately, you can't do anything. We're just this is the world that we live in. I mean, no, you, you wait. Well, there's no way to stop any of this 100 percent. Well, you're never going to stop it. But, you know, a lot of it starts at home. Yes. You know, as I say, there, there's no home learning. So, you know, they might be in an, you can't, kids, kids that have a problem with, you know, like they're being bullied or they don't like the world or the world's not fair to them. That's nothing you can even, you can't, that's hard to fix. But a lot of it, you know, they don't have any, you know, I would say here this, they don't have any uh, kids that do that kind of stuff. And, and when they catch them, they have this deer in the headlights look. They have no, um, they don't have any respect for life. Let's just say that. And that that's something that you have to teach at home, I think. So um, it's got to be taught someplace, you know. Uh, and there's got to be penalties, too. You know, there's got to be punishment for the crime. So you know, I think that yeah. lacks a lot of it, too. So Yeah, there's a bunch of things like that. You know, I think, um, you know, ultimately the, the parents of those, like, you know, there is, there is a kid in that situation that's dead and there's several kids that are wounded. The parents don't give a crap so much about the penalty of that. And even the, you know, that, what that sounds like that happened really fast. Well, and if that kid, if that kid, yeah. And if that kid is still alive, he probably pretty much just did that thing and then surrendered. And now he doesn't now. And, and then now, and they don't have any fear of anything really bad happening to him because it won't. Yeah. So that's like a really misguided call for attention. And we have more and more people that are doing that. We have a lot of people that are, that are doing things to seek attention in our society, not just uh, being destructive in that way. But there's lots of things that people are doing and, and we can try to fix all those things. As parents, you take responsibility for your children, you know, and you try to talk to them and nurture them and, and all those kinds of good things that, you know, all good parents out there attempt to do. That doesn't, you know, they're still just broken human beings yeah, in, in even the world. Some, you know, it, it, there's sometimes that doesn't even work either because, like you said, they're, they're broke to start with. So, yeah, you know, I mean, the, the thing about going to school, there's all these things that happen to you. And, and, and a lot of us go through it. I'm sure we all have stories of terrible things that happen that someone was bullying you or, you know, school wasn't happy for this reason or that reason. But you get through it. I got news for you. That's life. Yeah. That's the gauntlet that you go through. Some people aren't prepared for that. You want another real life example of how you should um, get, get your kids in line if they say something uh, that's inappropriate revolving around guns? Go ahead. I love live examples. Hey, Donovan. <laughs> Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Donovan. Come here for a second, please. Put that cereal down and get in here. <laughs> uh, he, he smashed this cereal when now I'm letting him close to me, but I'm gonna like move away from him. The kid's just getting over strep. I still don't trust him. So uh -huh. it, it's ironic that he comes home with strep the same day I found out he has a girlfriend. I just want to kind of point that out, but yeah, yeah, it seems like you're dealing home with a uh, like not uh, what is it? Uh, How old is this kid? He has a girlfriend, yeah, he's got a date and he's 11. Oh, oh dear, no, 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 no. He's got a date Friday that I have to be punctual for because men aren't late for dates. That's what he told me. Oh, okay. Well, hey, you know, can't hate, can't hate. I, hey, you know, I, I just stripped out girlfriend on the same day with a date Friday that he can't be late for. You know, <laughs> life is about to get interesting for me. Hey, Donna, come on over, man. You know, we're gonna be tight in this space. Just get over here. You might sit on my lap. <laughs> All right, say hi to Walter and Hank. Hi, Walter. Hey, Hank. what's up, Donovan? All right, so this is Donovan. You guys will see Donovan on some of my videos coming out. Donovan is going to have an episode once a month where he's talking to kids about responsible firearm ownership and safety. So you will be seeing more of him. Um, but Donovan, I want you to share a story with us. All right, this is not to embarrass you. We're talking. We're having a conversation about kids being brought up right at home around guns and being good people and all this stuff. So, what did you do when you were six years old? I threatened another kid that my dad would kill him. Oh, that's not good. That's so not why why did you threaten him like that? 
because I don't. You guys were joning on each other. Yeah. They were cracking jokes back and forth, and Donovan was losing. Oh, so, so he just got mad. So my dad's <laughs> Yeah, he said that my dad will kill uh, you and your dad. Oh. So Donovan was in Mississippi when this happened, and you were six years old. Besides getting in all kind of trouble, how long was it before I allowed you to touch a gun? Four years. He went four years. How often did I talk to you about guns, though? Every day. Every day. <laughs> now, when other kids came over, would I teach them with guns and let them hold guns and go out and shoot guns with me? No, not most of the time, yes. All right, but could you go shoot a gun? No. All right, and how often did I remind you about why you couldn't shoot a gun? <laughs> Every once, two weeks. Yeah, so a couple of times a month? Yes. Like, hey, see this thing? Oh, that's awesome, but guess why you can't shoot it, right? So what did you learn from that? What did that teach you? Never to threaten somebody that to kill them with a firearm. Or are we here to bully people? No. Do we use our skill set or the tools we have to intimidate human life? No. Or is that a bully tactic? Yes. Is bullying okay? No. And if we're bullied at school, what do we do about that? Tell the teacher or you. Is there any reason why because somebody's bullying you, you enact violence upon them? No. That is for the adults to handle, correct? Yes. Your job is to report it. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Good kid. Yeah. Yeah. And um, you need to add to the roster that you embarrassed him on a live broadcast. Ah, oh, nah. <laughs> he was about right. 100 points. <laughs> Bro, he was he was six. I mean, he's 11 now. And, you know, the funny thing was, the, the crazy thing, and what hurt my heart as a father, is that I had just let him, at four, I started him with, you know, safety. Hey, this is a gun pointed that way, stuff like that. And at six, uh, it was me, him, and Grandpa, and he got a chance to shoot his first gun. And mm -hmm. he left with them to go to Mississippi after the range. And I get a phone call three days later, like, yeah, I'm like, oh, my God. So I just gave you this thing, and now I got to pull it away from you. But I stuck to my guns. And everybody's like, four years, four years. I said, not just four years, a reminder a couple of times a month why you can't do it. Nothing worse than tormenting a kid when you let other kids do stuff they can't do in front of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, but it, there was a point yeah. to drew home. And like I told people, I can do four years and remind him of his mistake or I can let it I can let it go. And he does 40 years because he kills somebody well, or I get him at six. You know what I mean? So at six years old, you don't know what you're saying. Right. But it's my job to help you understand what you're but saying. But you need things that you need things that pull you up and, and, and indicate to you that that's the wrong thing to say. What were you gonna What were you gonna say, Walter? Or oh, and it's also putting it's also putting Kevin out on the limb too, saying my dad is gonna come and get you. You know, because right. th next thing you know, they're talking to you. Yep. You know? Yeah. Absolutely. So you're getting lots of kudos for that, Kevin, from uh, Chris Servin, uh, uh, Steel Ringer, Ken Helmers, Vanessa Kitty. Everyone's saying, uh, you know, good parenting on that. Uh, when real cool, Joe. When's he get his braces? When's he get his braces though? Uh, man, that's a good question. Um, I think I just remember how much them. them <laughs> how much they cost? cost? They cost, man. Oh, um, late way. Are you <laughs> still making payments? Man, uh, I think we're I think we're done in a few months. My wife is uh she she runs the money. I think we're done in a few months. Okay, uh, I, had, I had braces uh, when I was. I think he gets them off. He's eleven. I think they come off at thirteen. So he's got a couple years left. Yeah. Okay, I think for all of that embarrassment he just went through, you should, you know, be a nice dad and let him go on his date. We can't, you know, let's not hate on him. I don't, I don't yeah. have let a him choice. have his date. I don't. I tell I tell Donovan all the time, you are always going to be my prime example because you're a young man, you like guns, and we don't we don't do things like well, yes, I do. I embarrass him, but it's all out of love. Like uh, that's the job of a parent to embarrass yeah, a kid. Yeah. I will make it hard on you. And but now to see his respect level for a firearm man is like. It's ridiculous. And when I told him, when I let him start helping me teach classes, oh yeah, like, oh yeah, because he goes with me every now and then, and he'll help teach any kids that I have. And like he's he's in front, he's a leader, he's in, he's instructing them because he un, he has a, a, a severe level of respect now, and he understands the penalty if you say or do the wrong thing. So he's gonna probably wind up being a guy ten years from now that's gonna be our, you know, he's gonna be the the guy that's pushing us out the way, saying, "Move, let me handle this old people." So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well. That's the job of the parent, I think, to embarrass the kid. And then later on in life, it becomes <laughs> the job of the parent to still embarrass the kid, but in different ways. You do the embarrassing stuff to your kid. Right, Walter? Yes. I, I... 
And now, so Kevin, you should reward that young man with like a scar 16 or something. Yeah. Well, first, okay, first of all, if we get any score in this house, it's going to be a score. Yeah, seven. that's what I was about to say. Um, and it, he's he's Donovan has been rewarded. So when he turned things around, um, and, and and it took him, man, he was really over it in like two weeks. I just had to stick to the punishment. And you know, sometimes you don't really want to punish your kids. You want to let it in, but you're like, I said this thing, and I gotta let it go out. Um, but as soon as like that was over with, we like celebrated. So for his uh, birthday, um, he wound up getting a um, an AR pistol. Oh. I built him an AR pistol. So for his 10th birthday, he got an AR pistol. And then for his, uh, when he turned 11, I think he got like a good grade in school. And I was like, well, guess what? Reason to buy a gun. So I bought him another gun. And so <laughs> he's got, um, he's got an AR 15 pistol and he has, um, uh, what? no man, I'm a horrible parent. Uh, the Ruger 597 22. Yeah, I think it's the 597. Uh, the Ruger 597 with 22 rifle. He loves it. Um, his AR pistol. He also, well, he has three guns. He has a Smith and Wesson MP 22. And then his favorite gun to shoot, oddly enough, is the Glock 17. And that's, he can run a Glock 17 at seven yards in a six-inch group. Like, yeah. pretty good for it, you know, 11 years. Like so. Looks like when he sat down, it looks pretty big. Uh, yeah, Donovan is 11, whereas a size 11 shoe and is five foot three and a half. Okay. Yeah, like a big boy. <laughs> he's, he's like big. Uh, three inches taller than Lola. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's a big kid. He's a, he's a gentle giant, though. Yeah, um, Chris B says he also needs to know how to defend himself against bullies. Sometimes there's no time to report and only time to defend yourself. Um, uh, he lives in a house with me. Trust me. Um, he is. The thing is, I think, and we all preach this even when we talk about grownups. The reason why I say be prepared for there is no other choice. It's not a victim mentality. It is that understanding what you're capable of um, and understanding how to use that responsibly. So although bullying is a real thing, Donovan has a skill set with empty hands. He has a skill set um, that he is very capable of using. But I have put the restraints on him and said, you're not able to use it. Um, and that's because I don't want kids are finicky, right? Now, I don't know you guys know this. Your kids are older than mine. They're very finicky. If I tell you, yeah, if a guy hits you, then use this. Now, you can defend yourself. You can, you know, he knows defensive moves. He knows how to get you off of them, report it to the teacher. If you corner him, the kid will make you suffer for it. I mean, how many guys that are 11 or 5 foot 4? I mean, and he's 122 pounds. So, <laughs> He is capable <laughs> of defending himself, uh, but we also want to teach him that restraint. So as he gets bigger and stronger, I don't want him just welling off, knocking some kid's jaw loose uh, because he said the wrong thing to him. So it's about mitigating it and keeping it even. Yeah. You know, knowing how to make decisions and all that kind of stuff. Of course, you know, everyone has the right to defend themselves when backed into a corner. So there you go. Um, got some other good stuff there. Uh <laughs> Lawrence Lerwick says that you should get him a, a SH, SHCF 50. <laughs> well, you know what? He's a sure, pack. Kevin will totally get him one of those for himself. <laughs> I've, had, I've, I've, had, I've had hundred pounders shoot in the 50 cal and shoot it. They'll shoot it all day long if you let them. So, you know, that size is not a matter there. It's just um, uh, spirit. Spirit is the word. Yes. If you have the proper spirit. You can shoot anything. So, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, let's hit a couple more news things here. Um, so I think in Texas, uh, as her, let me see, Texas LTC renewal fee suspended for counties hit by Hurricane Harvey. Harvey, so that's LTC stands for license to carry. Says, oh, they suspended the renewal fees? Yeah, as Hurricane Harvey approached Texas, thousands of Texans rapid, rapidly evacuated their homes. In addition to losing their homes, they also lost pressure. Uh, Precious possessions and irreplaceable family heirlooms. Some Texans lost or damaged their license to carry cards too. In response, Texas Governor Greg Abbott has temporarily suspended LTC replacement fees for anyone residing in counties that have been declared disaster zones. So if you lost your uh, what we call concealed carry permit, which they call license to carry in Texas, you know, in those counties affected, that's good news. Yeah, it is. Right, you can't knock that. Uh, um, no electricity for months in the U.S. Virgin Islands. Wow. Yeah, that's that's um. Yeah. That's a modern marvel, man. That once you know, when, when you don't have that, you know, that's like sufferation begins. I mean, people say that it's no big deal, but yeah, it's you know. No, you know, it's a big deal. 
Yeah. You know, I like I like to have some ice in my drink when I have a drink, you know, and yeah. believe it or not, ice is a ice is a is a valuable thing when there's no electricity. Well, if you think back, like um, Florida, I think changed drastically when they started putting air conditioning in houses. There'd be no Florida <laughs> if there was no air conditioning. Yeah, yeah I mean, you still there was still some people living out here, but not like not in these numbers. No, no, no. Yeah, that's like that's like Las Vegas. There'd be no there was a Las Vegas. There was a little bitty, a little bitty podunk, you know. Cow town in Las Vegas. Oh, look at that! Be careful. Oh, I'm sorry. Hold on. I'm getting bum rushed. They're 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 saying that. You want to say night? Like uh, oh, hitting the rack. Good night. Right. Yeah. So, Good night, guys. What? Excuse me. Give me some kisses. She looks right. like Mrs. Mrs. Santa. Claus. Donald, and Donald. Uh, yeah. You say night, everybody. Good night. Good night. All right. And how are you doing in math? Somebody asked how you're doing in mathematics. <laughs> How are you doing math? Well, yeah, math is your strongest subject, so I always know you're doing. It. Yeah, that's math is. If somebody asks him how he's doing in math. Yeah, that's his uh, strong suit. Is math. That's good. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's pretty good considering nowadays they engineered math to confuse the living crap out of not only the kids <laughs> but the parents. Man, <laughs> he came home with some homework like his first day of school, and he's he's just got into the sixth grade, and he came home with some homework, and the way they had it worded, like, like my degrees meant nothing. I'm like, what is this? Like I, I literally had to sit down and, and like re it took me like an hour to figure it out. And once I got to figure it out, I'm like, oh, okay, this is easy. But the way they worded it and asked you. Like, yeah. Well, one of the problems, like when I went to high school and you did uh, in school in general, you did math, as long as you could show how you came to that conclusion. So if you had a piece of paper and you can show how you did that calculation, it was all good. Now they have to do it a specific way. They don't care how you came to the conclusion. They just want a specific answer. So, you know, yeah, it's, it's I don't yeah. know, it's a mess. And um so Vanessa Kitty says, Go math, I teach it, and no uh we do not hank. <laughs> so um yeah, I I think you know I'm not saying the teachers make it complicated. No, you know, there's more yeah. the teachers yeah, the curriculum. The curriculum out there is yeah all that all that common core garbage and all that stuff. I mean, you know, it's dumbing down of this of the of the school system. Yeah, back in the days, like I think Michael Smith says that you could show your work as long as you could show your work, what you're good. But now you have to do it a specific way. They don't care about your work and whether or not you came to the right conclusion. That's tell that's control, isn't it? And that just so they run the show. You do it their way, or you don't. You don't work. Yeah, programming the kids for future, you know. A little bit, yeah. Yeah. But so, when I went to school, back back when we had the abacus. Um, they didn't have the abacus back I could, then. I couldn't tell you how to work an abacus in my life. <laughs> oh, you've, ne have you, you've never used an abacus? No, not really. Oh. Just, I've yeah. seen it explained to me, but I'm not that smart. Yeah. When, um, I was in, when I was in school in England, we used abacuses or abacusi. They had they called the math back when I was in elementary school new math, and I'm like my mom would be like, why is it new math? It's the same old math. Why is it new math? You know, I, I could never figure that out. So if anybody knows what new math is from the 70s, um, let me know. But I don't know. it all worked the same then, you know. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. Okay. So any news things you guys want to? Uh... Uh, news. 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 I haven't been following, you know, I've been following the generator noise, so I gotta see what uh what we yeah. got. Um there's a couple of things. Uh let me see here. There's a couple of things I wanted to talk about before we get okay. So I don't know if anyone was watching the Apple thing. I'm an Apple guy. What happened? I have an iPhone. They announced uh, some new phones and stuff like that. Mm. So the iPhone X, which is their tenth celebration phone, they they announced the iPhone eight. In its different variations, and then they is came it, out with it, the with the X. It's like a thousand dollar phone. Does it? No, that's my. They, they want, let's just chat about that for a second. Oh boy! No, here, here we are. Here we are. You know, we're in Florida, and there's generators running and all this stuff. You got money for a thousand dollar telephone, which basically that's all it is, and maybe a calendar and a calculator. Okay, fancy one. But you don't have a. Uh, you don't have enough money to get a four hundred dollar generator. I'm not. I'm not arguing with you. Hey, you know the generator will last you 20 years. That iPhone will last you till next year, and you go out and do a stupid thing and buy another one, or until you drop it and it smashes <laughs> on the concrete, <laughs> or, or you buy the thousand dollar phone and you can't spend a hundred dollars for the case, and then when you drop it, you're all pissed yeah. off. Okay, um, I hate to interrupt you here, but uh, this is this is from Joe Carpenter. 
Oh, we did, did we lose? We lost Kevin for a second there. Joe Carpenter says um, Walter's teacher was Pythagoras. <laughs> 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 Sugar Bear says uh, that's a, uh, the, uh, the phone is an NSA spy device. <laughs> well, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. There you go. Okay, um, I just, I, listen, just get... I think it's cool. I think, I think the new phone is cool and all that kind of stuff is awesome. I'm not gonna be in a rush to get it, but well, it has some. Yeah. I thought, I thought, you know, because everything was made in China, I thought it was, you know, we couldn't make it here. How do you, how do you justify it? you can't make a thousand dollar phone here? Uh, I'm pretty sure that they're gonna they're gonna respond to that that if they made it here it'll be like a ten thousand dollar phone but I, I don't know we, I think we can I think we can make those things here why the, not the the, the 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 equipment the automation's all the same it runs on the same power so what are you saying you're not getting you're not getting the iPhone X no why would I want to do that I got an iPhone seven that I don't use three quarters of the thing on stuff on it yeah yeah so there you go well but who does I mean I mean, some people do sit all day long and play on the phone. Um, uh, listen, to some people, a phone is very important. I mean, I use my phone a lot, man. My phone is, this is like my office. It is important when you yeah. need to. I make videos out of this, post stuff to YouTube, communicate with the awesome people out there. Me too. I would have walked with you on my phone, but you chose not to, so. You what? You wanted to do what? I would have walked with you when you didn't have a digit, when you didn't have, when you didn't have to go to your, your studio this one oh, oh 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 yeah we yeah. could have bogged on this and that's you true up, you could have pulled up in a parking lot someplace where it was good wi-fi um i told you sit in your me and i was sleeping sit in your air conditioned brand new truck and we could did, have you got did you never hear about do not wake a sleeping bear do not wake the sleeping bear. Are you like a honey sleeping. bear or are you like a, yeah. you're like a like when a, when there's no friggin' air conditioning <laughs> and there's a storm going on outside. <laughs> Don't wake a dude <laughs> and tell him. I blocked yeah. my candlelight, Biatch. What are you talking about? Yeah, well, that's. <laughs> yeah, I noticed I've created a monster, <laughs> Kevin. I'm telling you, this is ridiculous. When I met Walter, he he didn't even know what a phone was. <laughs> really? Okay. Yeah. If, unless it had like a big rotary circle thing that you put your fingers in and go like this. <laughs> <laughs> I told yeah. you I told you a story about my mother-in-law. My mother-in-law would still have a rotary phone if if they if 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 they could plug it in the wall and it still works, she'd use it. I mean, well, yeah. speaking of things, um, before he goes to bed, Donovan wants to uh, he wants to show his thing. Uh oh, because because uh -oh. young guys get to show their stuff, right? Oh, okay, okay absolutely. Yeah. Right. So, Donovan, go ahead and um, check that chamber. Give me another chamber check. Pull it back. Just look at that chamber. Let me see it. I always get that double verification. All right, good to go. Hold it right, secure it properly, and you can come over and talk about your little AR pistol and how much you like it and things. Come on over here, we're gonna be tight. All right, like now you gotta show it so the camera can oh. see that, it. Like oh, this. that's nice. I like the. Uh, oh, is yeah. that a Diamondback handguard? It is a Diamondback. It's the, the TRS, I believe it is. Uh, you Very nice. The camera, for they can see it. Got a brace. There you go. Um, Wow, that's a look at that break on that thing, man. <laughs> that muzzle break is bodacious. Yeah, pretty close. Yeah. Uh, who, what muzzle break is that? Uh, that is the Jeez. Fortis. Um, I forget the model number. It's the Fortis. It's kind of like the Michelin break, so you love it because it keeps it nice and flat. But the guys next to you will hate you forever. Yeah. Now, yeah. Donovan, tell us the truth. Is this your gun or your dad's gun? <laughs> it's your gun. Okay. Oh <laughs> <laughs> Does your do you let your dad shoot this gun? Yes. Yes, I do. Oh, okay. Okay. Cool. I'd make okay. him ask. Say please. Yeah. Yeah. Right. He, he'll he'll look at me crazy if I'm packing it up to go do something. But he's like, but I'm not going. I'm like, I know. But why is my gun going? <laughs> <You know? laughs> if I, if I'm That's not very going. nice, man. That's a very very nice gun. Thank you. And you've got. I see you've got. Uh, what is that? Magpul sights on there, or? Uh, yeah. He's got the Larue sights on it, actually. Oh, Larue. Okay. Yeah, he's got some nice Larue sights on it. Yeah, there you go. Okay, so actual metal, some actual metal up in there. Size, he's got the extended because eventually, and so for anybody that's like building their kids things, I, I advise, you know, put stuff on there they can grow into. I always say don't buy a gun for tomorrow, buy it for five or ten years in the future. So the reason he's got the extended latch is eventually, because if you notice, he's learning with irons. He doesn't have a dot. Um, when, he, when he gets up to a dot or a scope, whichever one we decide, he might get a small scope for this thing. But for he can always manipulate it with that extended latch is why it's already on there if we can be used to it. Um, but yeah, and then I don't don't cheap out on their parts either. Like he's got a BCM bolt in that thing. Um, 
He, he now, got, why did you go with the blade over like the uh, SB Tactical or the? Or, I, I didn't want I didn't want him uh, in case I had a brain fart one day. I didn't want him sticking his arm in there because when he got this, he was a little bit smaller than what he is. I didn't want him sticking his arm in there thinking that was going to be end all be all and kind of get over mechanics a little bit. So um, I just decided the, the shock wave would be the, the best way to go for him. OK, cool. And uh, go ahead. No, I just said I liked I liked the uh, I like those type of braces. Yeah, uh, Chris Servin says hopefully hopefully you can reload faster than you. <laughs> <laughs> That's just a little bit. Ah! That's just... Oh, yeah. uh, Donovan actually has a video. Uh, oh, put the knife in there. Oh, and hey, Chris, it. that was mean, man. That was just no. flat out mean. But Donovan does have a video. Uh, I put it out on um, I think Instagram like a long time ago, where he actually walked up to me and asked for snap caps and some mags where he can practice. So. He has a video uh, dropping mags, reloading mags, chambering rounds with snap caps. So yeah. he's, he's pretty good with it. He's yeah. So good. so one last question, Donovan. Yes. Um, you do know that you have a pretty awesome dad, right? Yes. Okay. So you know, just make sure you you know you don't forget to tell him that he's awesome. <laughs> yeah, because that's a pretty awesome dad you have. <laughs> now um now what did you get from Miss Lady in the background? Because I see her. She's looking. She's like, well, what what, what do I have? Yeah. Um, Kayla, just ran back. <laughs> good job. Thank you, All right, Donovan. Donovan. Thank you. Good night. Take that back where it goes. So, there you go. Chamber see now, I, I, I. So she is. Um. Go ahead. Ain't you supposed to be upstairs in a bit? What are you doing? Her tucker in or is down here? Uh oh, okay. you gotta go tuck it. Yeah, we'll 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 wrap this up. <laughs> no, the tucker in is her brother. Oh, oh, know. oh. Okay. She chooses which man she wants to do it. So go ahead and get tucked in. Uh -huh. Y'all go ahead. Secure that first, then tuck her in. Um, no, that young lady is. I'm trying to wait for her to get a little further away from me, but she is going to get. Um, I don't know which one I'm going. With. I might just go with the Ruger 1022, but she's going to get a uh, Hello Kitty edition. So we're going to oh. deck one up for her sixth birthday. She'll get a little Hello Kitty. She likes Hello Kitty, and um, now are you going to make it pink? Yeah, dude. Come on, man. I got to kind of, sort of. Like oh. it's sort of kind of, but not because it's a girl color, but because the character she like happened to have pink in her like portfolio. Oh, if if yeah. you're gonna make it, it would be like a pinkish, pink, purplish okay. thing. But make it like a drab. Make it like a you know what is that? Like a uh, a matte pink or something. Okay. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> like butch it up a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> have it a little tough. I don't yeah. know. I'm thinking. I'm thinking about definitely putting um. Uh, when I get it for, I'm, I'm going. One thing I am going to do is add a, a plate to it and have my guys at Midwest Cerakote add a plate to the the stock of it. And I want a metal plate, and then the plate um, is going to say, you know, a, a dad's true love, and I'm going to have um, a little message on that plate to her. Um, and the same thing I'm going to do with him when he gets his uh, his uh, his first real handgun. Like his first handgun is going to be like yeah. his real handgun that right. he is going to be legit. And I want them to be able to. I want to get guns that they can pass down. I want to start a, a tradition with guns. Right. And speaking of which, uh, Ken Helmer says uh, Henry has youth rifles, which those are good rifles to pass down, you know. Um, yeah. yeah, I like you know, Henry. Yeah, they've got some cool stuff. Jay Hike says Muddy Girl. So Muddy Girl, you know the Muddy Girl. Muddy Girl pattern, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So there you go. Any pink any pink rifles in your house, Walter? No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> no. Uh, yeah. The only, I mean... Peggy, Peggy has a, doesn't, Peggy, she doesn't have any kind of pink rifles. No, she don't like that on guns. Yeah, no. Lola, Lola's not a fan of the pink stuff. Either. No, no, she has an M1 carbine that's hers. Um, when I when I sold all my guns to pay bills and stuff, she said you can't sell my M1 carbine. Yeah. So, um, I didn't have even a gun of my own. I think, and I still had that M1 carbine. So, yeah. Is anyone into uh, Hellboy? Because I see they're coming out with a new Hellboy. Oh yes. Yeah, that's one of my There's favorite. Is new one out? Are you into Hellboy? Uh, Hell yeah, supposedly, supposedly someone's coming out. The internet reacts to first look of David Harbour's Hellboy. I could ask, I'd have to ask Spencer about that. He could tell me about that. So apparently, oh, I think this guy David Harbour. Oh wait, this guy looks familiar. Isn't he from The Walking Dead? Oh, let me look him up. Let me see. Someone's got to look up David Harbour because he's a, apparently going to be the new Hellboy. I guess. It's yeah. I'm not. I'm not. I'm thinking something else. I'm sorry. Did you were you did you like Hellboy, Walter? Is that on it? No. I don't. I, I'm. You know about Hellboy. I'm not having a vision of Hellboy, so I, I guess I haven't seen Hellboy. So. What? 
<laughs> How do you have a tank and a rocket launcher and grenade launchers and you haven't seen a two? Yeah, there's, a, there's a bunch of World War II stuff Kevin, in Hellboys. You would like it. What yeah. what the hell is that? You used to see, yeah. hold on, let me look. I gotta bring him up bigger. He was in Quantum of Solace, he was in Revolutionary Road, End of Watch, Suicide Squad. Um Walter, what the hell was that? I'm sorry. <laughs> what, what is that? 106 millimeter recoilless rifle round. This is a projectile from that. Oh, you missed this earlier. Let me lock it on there. I mentioned a, 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 probably a month or so ago on, on the blog here about um, I was looking for recordless rifle stuff. And one of the one of the guys that listens and watches said, hey, I got a 106 millimeter round if you want it. And I already had this 116, 106 millimeter shell casing from a recordless rifle. And I said, yeah, I'll take it. So yeah, Real Cujo says the guy who's playing uh, Hellboy hates Trump, and he's he was also in Stranger Things. There you go. Does that really matter? Uh, every actor, yeah, there's a lot of actors in Hollywood that hate Trump. I know that, but I mean, uh, everybody, you, you're, now you got to rate everybody. They got to come out with their political stuff, and they got to let you know that they hate somebody or they like somebody. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that doesn't make me not want to watch him. So thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, they better not mess up Hellboy because I like Ron Perlman. So, oh, that, okay, that's okay, that's okay, that's who I was thinking of, Hellboy. Yeah, I, I, I'm familiar with that. Yeah. Also, Sopranos, Goodfellas actor Frank Vincent dies at seventy-eight. Oh, really? So one of he he played one of the characters in the Sopranos. Um, what was the name of the guy that he played in the Sopranos? Uh, I can't remember right now. Guido. So. <laughs> Frank, okay. yeah, Tony, 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 there Tony. you go. Yeah, Tony, yeah, Tony, yeah, Tony, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, you know, I, I probably shouldn't tell this story. Forget it. What? Oh, you got it. You got a Trump story, or you got a you got a mafia story? <laughs> <laughs> <I think>. No, <laughs> no, not, not. somebody in the family there. You know what I'm saying? No, no, no. <laughs> no. I was just saying, like, uh, well, you know, when I was a kid growing up in Farakaway, you know, it's like. For Rockaway, there's Bensonhurst and a bunch of other places yeah. around there. And we would go to the movies and, you know, there would be like, so we would see like the Italian guys going to the movies yeah. and just to torture them, we would go, hey, Tony. And then you'd see like everyone turn yeah. around. <laughs> 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 so I know that's terrible and racist of me. Ah, that's, well, it's not nothing to do with racism. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What other gun porn do you have before we wrap it up here? Let's wrap it up. People want to see gun porn. On the downbeat. Let's let's see who's got the gun. Okay, hold on. What the hell? Okay, there we go. Yeah. What is this? What is this? Keg twelve. Keg twelve. Uh, extended tube. Remy, this is a ten inch keg twelve. Okay. We also do the seven inch. The the world's uh, the known the the that sound is universal for oh shit. Yeah, that's true. That means that's what they say. That's what they say in the gun stores, but that always, I, I, you know, that just pisses me off. I'll tell you what's universal for oh shit. Bam! <laughs> <laughs> um, I just have, I don't have a much that fancy. Um, but just be looking out for a review on this little guy. I know H I brought him up a couple of times. Yeah, it's the SK, HKBP9 SK. Oh, okay. You got a review coming out? Yeah, I'm going to do it. I'm going to pump a thousand rounds out of him. Um, and let people know he's got 200 rounds in him, so it'll be a 1,200 round uh, by the time I put the video out, just to make sure he's okay. uh, he's working. And oh, there's that little thing. And then I have oh, Walter's got some on the screen. Well, this was um, I mentioned the last time before the storm. I picked up this um, GSG Firefly. It's kind of a nut. It it's like a Sig uh, Mosquito. Yeah, a little 22, 22 copy. Picked it up just for fun. It's got threads on the other barrel, so we'll put a can on it, and you know. Oh yeah, we can suppress the living daylights out of it. Okay, you, you haven't shot that yet, right? Okay, let's see what Kevin has. Uh, this is just my my. This is my go-to, my Black Rain rifle. This is my little go-to. So I always advise people, man, set your rifles up. The only thing this doesn't have on it is my M Force because I took it off for a video on another gun. Uh, so normally my M Force is on it, but got the Vortex Strike Eagle one by six on this thing. You no know, quick adjust. Um, got my throw lever on it. Extended lag. Uh, ah, extended. Um, catch there. Um, bad lever on it. 
So everything I put on here is for a reason. Of course, it's got the QD like I talked about before, but this is definitely my go-to. Uh, I'm really becoming a big fan this of Strike Industries. I'm liking their stuff now. Strike, okay. Hand stop is pretty good. This break is um, it's pretty nice. Uh, yeah, I see that you're definitely a break, dude. Yeah, man. You like the brakes. <laughs> I like to me, I, and I know I can look. I can pick up a rifle and just do what I need to do with it. But when I get to tune it my way, I kind of like stuff. And you know, it's just bad because nobody likes to go shooting next to me. But <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, the poor people who are. <laughs> man, when I was training, there was some dudes that had those like bodacious brakes. <laughs> and you get bodacious side blast. That's what you. Yeah, I do yeah, like yeah. those little. They call them like the little daddy and the fat daddy. You seen those things? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I could tell you one thing like um, you should I, I didn't wear I had my gloves on me and I didn't wear them the whole time. But when you're doing like a lot of rifle training, you should probably wear gloves, man, especially when you're shooting next to a bunch of people. Look at look at my finger right there. Burn the finger. Oh, that's some that's from a shell oh, shell casing right there. Hold that up there. Oh, yeah. You got a nice little brass burn there. Yeah, hey, that's both, what, man. Just. Uh, oh, excuse me. I don't have big meat hooks like you do, Walter. Needles. You, you guys, that's you precious. Yes, these these are dainty. These are dainty hands. Yeah, hey, I know that gun. I don't remember the name of it though. So yeah, uh, what is this? Uh, Sten gun. Sten, yeah, Sten. Mark Mark Three Sten gun. World War Two British uh, submachine gun. Very cool. Nice. Very cool. Yeah. Full uh, auto. Yes, sir. Yes, it is. It's post sample. Yeah, that's the one that I painted black before I came up to your place. Oh, right, right, right. And, and the yeah. um, the uh, the uh, CLP uh, is a very good paint stripper, by the way. So. Um, yeah. <laughs> oh, you know what? Before you wrap up, Hank, I want to I want to toss out a teaser question there to your audience. Okay. So for this will go for kind of Hank and Walter. So yeah. guys, if I was able, and I haven't totally told them about this at all. But how many of you guys live in Missouri or will make the trip to Missouri if I can get these two guys to come up here and spend a couple of days, shoot guns and talk crap? I need uh -oh. to know how many people would do it before I start putting out invites. Um, uh, I don't know why you didn't invite us to Missouri in like last week. Uh, dude, I told you if you need a place to come, you were more than welcome to come up. I did. But I want to I want to start. Um, I want to start getting guys in person, so I need to. I need to. Um, I might as well use this audience as a poll too. So if we yeah. get off before you guys get a chance to respond, just hit me up in a personal note. But if you live in Missouri, cool. If you live close, cool. I just need to know how many people yeah. will be interested. If we in. have enough interest, we'll go up there, right, Walter? Yeah, we bring some uh, stuff to shoot. We bring, yeah, we bring yeah. some. We'll bring some bang sticks up there. Um, let me see. Uh, Tango Hunter says no backup irons. Uh, question mark. Is that a thing of the past? Question mark. Oh, you're talking about for this gun? Yeah. Uh, so on this particular one, no, there are no backup irons. Now, I do have a 45-degree front that I will throw on this one. Uh, but this thing here is it's battery-operated, true enough, but it's got an etch reticle. So, yeah. And then if you are, and I'll tell guys, too, now, backup sites are a good thing. You saw my son's gun, right? So clearly I like them. Uh, but if you are close enough to me to where um, um, – I can just point shoot. I will. I mean, you can point shoot with a, a rifle man out to a pretty good distance. I don't have to be pinpoint accurate. If you were in front of me and you're within 150 yards, I will nail you. <laughs> so it's um, it doesn't have to be. Yeah, because 223 is flat shooting. So, yeah. It, 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 yeah. Mark Wagner wants to know where in Missouri. Uh, St. Louis. Sorry. I should have said that. Yeah. And then Tyvon show is basically like Tyvon is basically trolling me now. He's like uh, Trump's hands are bigger than Hex. I don't think so. <laughs> he makes it sound Trump like Trump ain't got, got nothing on me. He makes it sound like he got little bitty paws. He got big hands too. He's a, uh, they're just they're just precious. It's not the size of the hands. It's not the size of the hands. It's the motion of the hands. That's what they tell motion. you. It's the motion. Uh, okay, whatever makes you do. With you, it's what you do. <laughs> it's what you do with your hands. On. I got my power on. Yeah. Yeah, you got. It's what you do. Okay, and so before before we start doing the wrap up here, Walter, what is an Anglophile? Go. Oh, somebody that's like an English, uh, likes the English or the British or England, 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 England. Yeah, that's you. You fall squarely into the Anglo. Well, you know, category. I have a little bit of genetic um, material from that neck of the woods, too, I found out. So oh. I kind of knew that, actually. So Yeah, so there you go. That's cool. Yeah. You know, yeah. nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. Oh, and, and these are all magazines you loaded. 
Yeah. Okay. Go, go ahead with the jokes. It's okay. Yeah. <laughs> Not go with ahead. the speed loader. <laughs> you got more loaded, loaded mags than I do. I can guarantee you that. <laughs> All right, so let's uh, let's wrap this up here. We've gone over two hours. Uh, it's good to be back. I'm happy to be back here. What do you guys want to talk about? Uh, let's let's do uh, Kevin. What do you want to you know? What do you want to tell the people about? Um, no, no, man, just keep up with everything. Thank you guys so much again for everybody who donated not only to, to the Hank Strange Project. I want to thank the guys that donated to uh, Shooting for a Cure. That was awesome. Uh, so stay tuned for more information on that. Be sure to follow on NOC for No Other Choice Firearms Training on Facebook. NOC Firearms Channel on YouTube, uh, Kevin Dixie on Facebook, and at NOC Firearms Training on Instagram. Um, and just stay tuned for all the cool stuff. And for anybody uh, in the Midwest, be on the lookout because Hank Walter just found out that they're going to get an invite up here and they are going to come. And I'm going to set up the range. We're going to get some food and some guns and we're just going to sit back and have a great time. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. And Walter, there you go. Okay. Walter's showing us the awesomeness. Go ahead. Oh, uh, Hold it up and, and tell us what you got, got to say. What I got to say. What I got to say is Safety Art Firearms, StenParse.com, uh, Facebook, Instagram, Mower Death. Um, we're working on some new stuff. If I can get my people back and we don't have no more hurricanes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I got my power on at home. Anyway, so, yeah, we're working on stuff. So just hang out, watch. Uh, uh, I'm working on getting something for the um, NRA show, too. I got to call them tomorrow, too. So. Okay, cool. You will be at the NRA show. For I'm folks trying. I'm trying. With us. Yeah. And a big thanks to the guy that sent you that recallless uh, oh, rifle. I, like I said, I don't know if he wants to be called yeah. out on, on live, yeah. but yeah, definitely. I like this. Thing. Yeah. If you do want us to give you a shout out, let us know. I don't want to put you out your name out there yeah, if you don't, don't want, want it out there. On, on the spot or nothing. But, yeah. Uh, but we will, you know. Yeah. Thanks. I appreciate it um, immensely. Yeah. Because that's, that's the kind of cool stuff I like, to be honest yes. with you. So. And you know what, Walter? You're welcome for us giving you the good luck of getting your house back on, on yep, online. Yep, You're welcome. Yep, yep. I am happy as I get, to go <laughs> I get to go home and cool off. <laughs> yeah. Get that nice hot shower going. Oh, yeah. You know. You know. It. Yeah. Put on the Barry White music. Okay. I'll leave, it. I'll leave the rest <laughs> up to you. <laughs> the guy, right. White, man. I, I, he got good music, you know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Mr. Barry White. Can't the, knock him at all. Yeah. <laughs> I so, uh, that, go ahead. Never mind. No, what's up? No, I was saying that Eddie Murphy uh, uh, stick where he uh, does Barry, talks about Barry White and he talks about uh, Luther Vandross. And have you, have you seen that part where he calls him Kentucky Fried Chicken Eating? Uh, oh, <laughs> he said that about <laughs> Luther? Yeah, he said that, yeah. Oh, <laughs> oh no, L Luther Vandross is cool too. I like Luther. He's all right. That's cool. good music, yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. like Big Luther, Skinny Luther. Uh, uh, big Luther. I think he was big talking Luther. about when Luther was yeah. Big Luther. Yeah, yeah, Big Luther, and definitely some. Uh, my favorite is Teddy Pendergrass. Yeah, yeah. You know, Teddy Pendergrass. There you go. There you go. So, man, um, I'm yeah. really getting beat up by the people today. What? What they say? What they call you now? No. Uh, oh no! Yeah, no, no uh, six magazines no. in two hours. <laughs> no, Vanessa. Okay, I get it now. Vanessa had asked a question like, "Hey, is the public is the NRA open to the public?" And I just said yes. And I thought she was trolling me. But she's not, but it was still would have been a good one. She said, thank you, NLC. I will find your sites and add them. I thought it was like an iron sight joke, but I think she means like the social media stuff. <laughs> but that still would have been a good one. I've been getting flamed tonight. It's pretty <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. All right. So I want to thank everyone uh, for sending us the good wishes. We really appreciate it. We're glad to be back. Glad that uh, most mostly everyone came out of this whole thing. Okay. I know there's some damage. Still folks out there with flooding and no power and all that kind of stuff. But there are lots of people who lost their lives and their homes and all that kind of, you know, all those horrible things. So yeah, me our heart having, goes out to them. Yeah, me not having no power is nothing compared to having your whole house blown away. So, you know. Yeah. Now we have to figure out how to rebuild here in Florida as well as people out in the Caribbean. You know, Florida, we're, we've got like one toe in the Caribbean to call the Keys. Yeah. <laughs> Beautiful place. I've been there to visit and, and, I, and I hope to go back. A, they're missing a couple toenails right now. So, yeah. So, you know, hopefully we'll be able to help them all out and they can come back. And, uh, you know, we will be here. We'll be back tomorrow and on and on and on. So I want to thank everyone, the people who sponsor us, like uh, Walter Keller from Safety Harbor Firearms, Rand CLP, Andrews Custom. Of course, Big Daddy Guns. Big Finally, Big the Big Daddy Guns got the data back. 
Thanks, Big Daddy Guns, for getting the data back in the in the studio. So do the whole storm, on. do the whole storm thing. I had great cell service the whole time. So, yeah, the so uh, yeah, my mine it was good, and then it got it had a little period where it got bad, and then it came back on, but. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there you go. And the a big shout out, big thanks to the folks uh, that sponsor us on Patreon, where Patreon slash Hank Strange. All right, everyone, you know what we do at the end? We say peace. Peace out. Yeah. Peace.